that day. So Mills in the Iowa side, Cabrera for the Redbirds. Starting pitching matchup brought to you by Confluence Brewing Company. It's easier than ever to enjoy Confluence beer while cheering on your eye Cubs. Available on tap and in cans in their own stand inside gate A here at the ballpark. Or pick up a draft in the Iowa craft beer area in the first base side of the concourse. Confluence Brewing, where good things come together. Appreciate it, Dean. That's the end of our Honey Creek Resort right here. Honey Creek Resort pregame show right here on the Iowa Cubs Radio Network. Umpires are heading towards home plate, and with that, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll give you our Hicklin Garage Door starting lineups. We'll give you the national anthem. We'll give you the Gates Barbecue first pitch between the Iowa Cubs and the Redbirds. Again, you're listening to Iowa Cubs baseball right here on the Iowa Cubs Radio Network. Doors for the Memphis Redbirds, the St. Louis affiliate, Ben Johnson, their manager. They're 36 and 53, 15 games behind Iowa in the American Northern Division. Randy Rosarina leads off in center. Then the third baseman, Kramer Robertson, at first, batting third. John Nagowski, the cleanup hitter, a Dolis Garcia right field. In left, it's Lane Thomas batting fifth. The catcher today, Joe Hudson, batting seventh at second base. Irving Lopez, then Jose Martinez at short. And batting ninth is Henesis Cabrera for the Redbirds. For the Iowa Cubs, acting manager Doug DeSantis. The play ball, cloudy skies, 79 degrees, very pleasant. East, southeast wind at six, blowing right to left. Humidity, 56%. And with the game's first pitch and the play-by-play, here's Alex Cohen. Appreciate it, Dean. Getting ready for our Gates barbecue first pitch. Gates sauces and seasonings. Great flavor, unmistakable taste by Gates, the Kansas City original. So here's Randy Arozarena. In to face Alec Mills. Defense behind Mills. Zagunas Hap Dweez. Right to left in the outfield. Castillo short. Machado Giambroni. Right to left in the infield of the first pitch. Chopper foul left side. Count 0 1 right away here at Principal Park. First pitch at 109 p.m. 78 degrees. Seasonable this time of year. The 0 1 pitch popped up. Right in front of the pitcher's mound. As Mills goes back, and it's caught by Eric Castillo, the first baseman. I thought Mills was calling off everybody, and then he ran third base side. Castillo made the catch one away. That'll bring up Kramer Robertson. I think he was the first guy to call it. Pitchers love to uh, catch those pop flies if they can, but uh, then he gave way to the position, position player. Castillo called him off. I guess cooler and smarter heads will prevail. So here's Kramer Robertson. One of those unwritten rules, right? What, cooler and smarter no, heads for the, the in, pitcher? <laughs> infielders take over yeah, for the pitcher. No, that, that's a run, unwritten rule. Pitch, and it hits the inside quarter for a strike. Count on one, one. I think Mills wanted to catch that ball, but got out of the way. 0-1 pitch from Alec. Chopper left side foul. Count on two. The Alec Mills that we've seen over the last seven starts is better than the Alec Mills we saw last year that got him to the big leagues. Change of fastball, curveball combination, 0-2. Curveball slap, third base side, it goes foul. Very skilled at changing speeds, doesn't throw hard. Fastball, upper 80s, maybe to 90 at times, but boy, he'll mix in. Curve at 69, slider 79, really changes speeds, and when he's on his game, which he has been, as you said, as of late, throws a lot of strikes, keeps those hitters off balance, and gets strikeouts, even though he's not over overpowering. 0-2, curveball misses outside. One ball, two strikes. Alec Mills has two curveballs, one in the mid to high 70s and one in the mid to high 60s. One, two. Fastball just misses outside. Out to a two. That curveball in the mid 60s, it's a borderline EFIS pitch. Manager Marty Peavy loves it. Two, two. Misses outside. Count three and two. High Cubs wearing their. Sunday red jerseys, Redbirds wearing their navy blue jerseys, gray pants. Memphis Redbirds struggling this year, coming off of back-to-back PCL championships. 3-2. Just misses outside ball four. And Kramer Robertson, a one-out walk here in the first. I bring up John Nagowski. Yeah, Alec got ahead, then he tried to get him to chase. So Robertson would not do it, so good at bat there for Robertson. Again, Kim Melke, the esteemed... Basketball coach at Baylor, his mom. Oh, 
Nagowski steps in from the right side. Good field up the middle, playing at double play depth. First pitch, and that's popped up. Medium depth center field. The in half towards right center. Five steps, he makes the catch. Two away, and here's Adolis Garcia. Garcia steps in from the right side. 15, excuse me, 16 homers, 56 runs batted in. Throw back to first, and it's not in time. Dean, a beautiful day for baseball. I Cubs and the Redbirds will be able to enjoy some R&R, rest and relaxation. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then the I Cubs will begin their second half on the road in Round Rock. Righty versus righty. Perfect summer day today. And the pitch, runners off. Pitch swing and a miss for a strike. Throw down a second is perfect, and they got him. What a throw by Taylor Davis. What a tag by Zach Short. Kramer Robertson didn't like the call, but a bullet. It's him caught stealing at second. It ends the inning. Mills faces the minimum. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. We'll go to the bottom of the first inning. No score right here on the Iowa Cubs radio network. The Redbirds. Hannesis Cabrera throwing his warm-up pitches. And he will see Donnie Dweez, Dixon Machado, and Ian Happ here to start things off. Icubs lost yesterday 5-4, to four, won 9-8 to eight two days ago. 5-4 to four on July 4th. Pitch, it's taken up high, count one of them. Defense behind Cabrera. Garcia in right, Rosarena in center. Lane Thomas in left pitch. Fastball misses outside. Now 2-0. Oh. Nagowski at first, Lopez at second, Martinez at short, Robertson at third. Doing the catching, Joe Hudson. Two balls, no strikes. Pitch, misses high. Count three and them. Oh. Hennessy's Cabrera, originally signed by the Tampa Bay Rays, out of the Dominican Republic. From Santa Domingo, he's 22 years old. Traded from the Rays to the Cardinals. Pitch, misses low and outside, ball four. Donnie Dweez, a four-pitch walk. Here to begin the bottom of the first will bring up Dixon Machado. Donnie, left-handed batter, but very good against left-handed pitching. Five home runs and 64 at bats. And with that walk, he's walked nine times against lefties. Struck out nine times. That's pretty good right there. And his on-base percentage was at 355 against left-handed pitching before that walk right there. So a guy that can stand the ground and do pretty well against lefties from the left side, Donnie Deweese. Four pitch walk here is Dixon Machado. First pitch taken down the middle for a strike. Count on 1 1. Cabrera prone to the home run ball, allowed 12 this year in 55 and two thirds innings. Also got a taste of the big leagues and gave up a couple home runs there as well. No balls, one strike. Dweez a two stride lead off of first. And the 0 1. Ground ball left side, base hit. Tucks down the left field line into the I Cubs bullpen. It rattles around. It's a live ball. The he, left fielder doesn't know that. He rounds third. Whole score. Machado heads to third. Now, now they, they rule dead ball. Got lost somewhere. Thomas gave up early, thinking, hey, it's down in the bullpen. Well, it, but, rattled, uh, it rattled around. He saw it hit the bench. And if it gets jarred underneath or the path is blocked, then it's a dead ball. Exactly. But it was a good two seconds before the uh, third base umpire, Lou Williams, astutely made that call. And Thomas, once he saw it going to the bullpen, he gave up. And there's a chance it could bounce out of there. And the Cubs had to get a run and Machado a triple. D, we saw an inside the park home run yeah. hit like that last yeah. this year. It was by uh, Wilmer Defoe for Fresno against Iowa. So here's Ian Happ, who's red hot lately. Steps in from the right side, lefty versus righty pitch. Ground ball off the front foot of Hat. Bounces foul. Count on one. He in 13 home runs, 45 runs batted in. Two nights ago against a left-handed pitcher, he had two home runs. So again, a switch hitter. Steps in from the right side. Runners at second and third. Nobody out. Infield back. No balls, one strike. Pitch by Cabrera. Fastball misses low. Count one and up. Hap is six for his last 14. Reach base, did over half of his plate appearances over the last week. 
Pereira does have good stuff. He's a strikeout pitcher, nearly one per inning this year. One ball, one strike. Pitch to Ian. This is outside, count two and one. Ian leads the team in walks. He's drawn 55 free passes this year. He's walked nine times in the last seven games. Two balls, one strike. Cabrera fires. Fastball swing and a miss. Back goes flying. Hits off the screen over the third base side and falls into the first row. Well, if I'm the fan, I'm taking that bat and running into the concourse and maybe into my car. Instead, Iowa Nice. Gives the bat right back to Ian. Yep. Yeah, Cabrera's got a good arm. Of course, the Cardinals, every organization needs starting pitching, and that's their hope. But if that doesn't work out, he's got that electric stuff. He could transition easily bullpen to the bullpen. Arm. Two balls, two strikes. Pitch to Hap. Misses inside, count three and two. When he was a member of the Rays organization, heard farm director for the Rays, Mitch Lukovic, saying that Cabrera could be a back end of the bullpen arm. He compared him a little bit to Jose Alvarado, though Alvarado a little bit bigger. But well, again, when you see those guys that throw, say, 90, 92, or 94, then they move to the bullpen, they start throwing 97, well, 98. And Cabrera's already 94 to 96. Yeah. Moving to the bullpen in shorter spurts. Could be upper 90s to triple digits. Three balls, two strikes to Hap. Runners at second and third. Walk by Dweez. Ground rule double. Dixon Machado. 3-2 pitch. Ground ball up the middle into center field for a base hit. Dweez scores. Machado rounds third. No throw. And a two-run single for Ian Hap. He is red hot the color of his jersey. 2-0 I-Cups here in the first. Nobody out. That'll bring up Mark Sagunas. Didn't try to do too much. He's now hit safely 10 of his last 12, up to 47 RBI on a 3-2 pitch. Just peppers it back up the middle. Of course, he has had a stronger year batting right-handed compared to his numbers from the left side. Ian, 277 right-handed before that hit. And as a left-handed batter, he's at 209 this season. That's, again, the area where the Cubs want more improvement is from that left side. Which we're seeing, I think, more lately we the last are. couple of weeks. Throw back to first, not in time. That was just, that was a pro at bat. Three balls, two strikes, and earlier in the season, you would see it over swing or nibbling on corners trying to draw a walk. Short stroke, rounded it up the middle. Two runs, single, two nothing, eye cuts. Pitch hits the outside quarter for a strike. Down with two, those runs were brought to you by Mid American Energy. He wants you to be safe at home, too. Be sure to check out midamericanenergy.com for tips so you can be safe at home when it comes to your electricity. Natural gas, digging on your property, and more. Be safe at home with Mid-American Energy. No balls, one strike. Pitch to Mark. Misses just inside. Cabrera didn't like the call. But that's been the I-Cubs offense all season long. Walk, double, two-run single. Bam, two runs in the first. And, of course, Happ has been very good with men on base scoring position. 280, uh, his season average of runners in scoring position. 1-1 one, one taken low, count 2-1. and one. Scoring position, two outs. Happ this year batting 371. That's a big deal. That is. It's a big deal. Those are pressure spots, and every bat in the big leagues has pressure, some more towards the end of the game, but it's a lot different up there than here on a day-to-day -day basis. Two balls, one strike. Cabrera fires. Now back at the screen behind home plate. Fastball at 94 up in the zone, and Zagunas just missed it. Some nice at-bats thus far for the Cubs. They're making Cabrera work. He's struggling with his command. 16 pitches, 9 balls. Based on what we're seeing, we'll see a lot of the Redbird bullpen. Of course, three days off of the All-Star break, so guys will get their work in before the break. 2-2 two -two count. Cabrera fires back to first. Hap jumps in safely. Ian this year, eight stolen bases, ten opportunities. He now leads the team and runs batted in. He's got 47 this year, 13 homers, 15 doubles. Leads the team in walks, leads the team in runs scored. Not a bad year, 2-2. Popped up, shallow right, coming out in, Adolis Garcia, and he makes the catch. Irving Lopez, the second baseman, the two about three feet away from each other. 
But again, Zagunas pops out. One away. He'll bring up Taylor Davis. Took him 17 pitches, got the first out. Yeah, fans, uh, Chicago Cub fans wondering, what's the team going to do? What's uh, Theo, what's Jed, what are they going to do here before that trade deadline? But, boy, you've got a pretty solid team, struggling a bit as of late, especially on the road. But hopefully, uh, Zobrist will come back, and, you know, Ian Happ is doing much better here. Taylor Davis hits a ball deep right center, going back at Dolis Garcia. Front edge of the warning track makes the catch. Just hit it a little bit off the end of the bat. Half back to first, two away. will bring up Zach Short. Hopefully get Carl Edwards healthy back up there. Morrow is down in Arizona rehabbing down there. We might see him at some point with Iowa before hopefully he's 100% get back to Chicago. So you start adding those people into uh, August and September and then hope for continued big years out of the likes of Baez and Bryant and Rizzo. I just think the Cubs are in good shape. Get Hamels off the DL. Lefty versus righty. Throw back to first, not in time. Uh, of those that you mentioned, the two that really stick out to me, getting Cole Hamels healthy because he was so good early on in the season, and getting Brandon Morrow healthy. First pitch, misses outside. Count 1-0 because if Brandon Morrow gets healthy, then you put the pieces of the bullpen puzzle together. The one area I see where Chicago would probably definitely make a move depending on uh, what they have to give up and who's available, but a, a left-handed uh, reliever setup type guy like Smith with the uh, Giants. Pitch foul back at the screen behind home plate. Count one to one. Will Smith fits that bill, as you said. Shaw Doolittle possibly yeah. for the Nationals, although the Nationals are playing a lot better. Yep. Almost well, because that division has regressed back to the mean. Braves aren't winning as much. Phillies are struggling. Nationals might win that division. Steven Strasburg and Max Scherzer have been. They've got the talent. Very good. 1 1. Now back at the screen. Now 1 2. I think the Braves would make some moves before that trade deadline. It, that might be the key to a lot of those teams is the, uh, the players they acquire here. Again, there's no waiver trades in August anymore, August or September. It all has to be done before July 31st. One ball, two strikes, throw back to first, not. Ooh, a little bit late. Nice play by John Nagowski. The throw was low. Nagowski backhanded it. One two count. Two nothing I Cubs. A two run single by Ian Happ. One two. Swing and a miss. Strike three. It was tipped. Loved by the catcher Hudson. And it ends the inning. I Cubs a score two runs on a two run single for me and Happ. Two runs, two hits, no errors. And one man left on base. We'll go to the second. 2 nothing. I Cubs right here. And the Abbott Hudson here to start things off. Ian Happ continues his hot hitting. A two-run single in the first. He's nine for his last 18. Here's Adolis Garcia. First pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Looked like a changeup, but radar gun says 87 miles per hour, so maybe just a two-seam fastball from Mills. Pitch. It's the outside quarter for a strike. Count with two. And when you throw 87 to 90, you need pinpoint precision on your pitches. And Alec Mills certainly has that right now. The 0 2 pitch. Curveball. Slap shallow left field. And going back to shortstop. Dixon Machado on the outfield grass. He makes the catch. Ball hit off the end of the bat by Garcia. Maybe five feet into left field. Put out by Machado. Bring up Lane Thomas. For whatever reason, that didn't look to be a comfortable at bat for Garcia. He's been very aggressive in the series, but didn't take his usual big swings. Maybe not seeing the ball that well. First pitch to Lane Thomas misses outside. Count 1 0. Well, no batter's eye here at Principal Park. It's usually more difficult to pick up a left handed pitcher than it is a right handed pitcher. The 1 0. Line drive, right field, base hit. Lane Thomas. Good job of hitting. Went with the ball. Peppers it the other way between first and second. It's now five for nine this series. Well, now base hit here with the second. I'll bring up Joe Hudson. I like Thomas. He's a good player. Very athletic. Big outfielder. As Dean said, peppered that the opposite way in the right field. One out single. Here's Joe Hudson. 
Fun fact that broadcaster for the Redbirds, Steve Selby, made sure to bring up to us. Joe Hudson hasn't drawn a walk in a month. Righty versus righty. Pitch popped up towards short. Going back, Dixon Machado gets called up by Donnie Dweez. About 10 steps onto the outfield. Grass makes the catch. Sun played some tricks on that one. Machado went back and was blocking the sum with his glove hand. Dweez had a better line on it. He was going forward. Machado was going back, and Donnie made the catch two away. Again, just like the infielder calling off the pitcher for pop flies, those outfielders, if uh, they can make the play, they call off the infielders. Coming in easier than going back. We're really making uh, a lot of unwritten rules today. Already the second inning. But Dean's right. Here's Irving Lopez, RBI double yesterday. Throwback to first, not in time. Now, Dean, the first half of the season, technically over tonight because go to the All-Star game, All-Star break. Icubs are playing their 90th game of the season, 90 of 140. So that is well over half. Yep, two-thirds almost. Righty versus lefty pitch. Two-seamer misses just inside. Might have been a bit high as well. Count one and up. If the Icubs would today, they'd be 14 games over 500 at the break. 52 and 38. When last year they won only 50 games all year. Not to mention uh, going into today's action, a 10-game win streak. Omaha has won three in a row, the second-place team. 1-0. Swing and a miss. Got him on a changeup. Count 1-1. All day games in the league except Las Vegas at Albuquerque tonight. Memphis, they bust back home after the game. I think a few of the Cubs are trying to get out of town uh, tonight, if not tomorrow morning. One ball, one strike. Hills looks back at first, now fires. Fastball grounded up the middle, and that's a base hit. Trickles into right center. Thomas goes from first to third. He'll get there without a throw. Pair of singles here, hit against Alec Mills in the second, and it brings runners at the corners two away for Jose Martinez. Lopez, uh, again, doesn't try to power the ball. He shortens up, uh, chokes up a couple of inches, and did a good job hitting it back up the middle. Gives a chance for his number eight hitter. Of course, Alec can be careful here with Martinez, the pitcher Cabrera on deck. And it's just not much of a hitter either. Alec Mills, 14 starts. He's 5-2 this year. ERA at 4.58, which brings him in the top 10 among PCL starters. 73 strikeouts, 74 two-thirds innings pitch. And the first pitch misses inside, count 1-0. Team will have a little bit of a break on Thursday. High Cubs take on the Round Rock Express from Del Diamond. Team will be on the call there, too. Making the trip down to Texas. You'll have both of us. Lucky you. 1-0 pitch. And that's crushed deep right, heading back Zagunas at the track. He looks up. That's into the Bud Light bleachers. A three-run blast for Jose Martinez. He might want to get that baseball. His first Triple A homer, and again touches them all. Three-run homer. Redbirds lead three to two here in the second. Had to be a mistake there, again, with a pitcher on deck. The number eight batter, new to the league. Powers one out of here. Huge for him and the Redbirds. Alec has been vulnerable to the home run ball, but usually uh, with Solo nobody shots. on base. Yeah. Exactly. So here's Hennessy Cabrera, first pitch. Fastball hits the outside quarter for a strike. 15 home runs he's given up this year, but 10 with the bases empty. Count the 1-1. One 3-2 -one. Redbirds lead. Pitch. Misses outside. Count 1-1. One one. Redbirds offense, they've scored their fair share of runs this series. 5-4 win yesterday. 9-8 loss two nights ago. 5-4 loss on July 4th. So four more runs in each game. 1-1. One one. And it's taken down the middle for a strike. Count 1-2. And despite the Redbirds struggling this year and the I-Cubs being in first place, this has been a very competitive season series. Pitch swing and a miss, strike three, and it ends the inning. Not before the Redbirds score three runs. They do so on three hits, no errors, nobody left on base. Redbirds take a 3-2 to two lead going into the bottom of the second inning. Again, you're listening to Iowa Cubs baseball right here on the Iowa Cubs radio network.
Bottom two here at Principal Park. Alex Goldin Ellis here on the call. Noah Manderfell back at the station. Beautiful day here to finish the first half of the PCL season. Icups trailing three to two. Two run single by Ian Happ in the first. Gave the Icups a two to nothing lead, but the Redbirds a three run, two out homer by Jose Martinez in the top of the second. Hennessy Cabrera will see Trent Giambroni, Eric Castillo, and Alec Mills here to start things off. First pitch. It's the outside corner for a strike. Count on one. Cabrera, long, lanky lefty, kicks and fires. Fastball misses inside. Count one to one. Key inning for him. His team just gave him the lead. Last night, Arahu's the starter. Same thing happened. He came down and quickly disposed of the Cubs. One, two, three in the bottom of the fourth after his team had scored four in the top of the frame. 1-0 pitch, foul back at the screen behind home plate. Make that 1-1 pitch, foul back at the screen behind home plate. Count 1-2. Well, this is a getaway day for Memphis going into the All-Star break. 1-2. Popped up right side, fouling out of play. Count 1-2. And you would expect that it would be a shorter game. Players more aggressive. We were talking before the game, and Dean, you were a part of probably one of the shortest nine-inning games in minor league baseball history. Well, no. And that's hit well to center. Right at Randy Arena. Three steps towards left center. He makes the catch. Yeah, I don't remember the exact time. It was like 57 minutes or an hour, three minutes. Do you know what year? Uh, it was early 90s. I don't know exactly which year. It was down in Oklahoma City, and there had been a brawl the, the day before, suspensions and fines, and the, the players there. Initially, they weren't going to play, and they decided to play, but that was their protest was to go after the first Swing pitch. Swing at every first pitch. Yep. First pitch misses side, or it's actually taken for a strike. Connell and one at the upper part of the strike zone. Cabrera working quickly. Three, two, I Cubs trail here in the second. The pitch popped up. Left side. Kramer Robertson racing in towards the I Cubs dugout, and he slides and makes the catch. No sunglasses. Good job. Came a long way. Feet first slide about three feet in front of the I Cubs dugout. Two up, two down here in the second. I'll bring up Alec Mills. I don't think we'll see 57 minutes or an hour and three minutes, but maybe around the two and a half hour mark. Could you even get color commentary, or was it just ball, pitch, yeah, play? No, That's it, was, it. it was pretty fast action. First pitch hits the outside corner for a strike. Count on one, so it's like Adber Owls alive when he pitches just for all nine innings. Nice, 0-2. So it's the 0-1, hits the outside quarter for a strike, count on 1-2. Alec Mills this year, he's 2 for 12 at the plate. A double and a single. The 0-2 pitch from Cabrera, swing and a miss, strike three. And Hennessy Cabrera, a quick 1-2-3 inning in the bottom of the second. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base, will go to the third. I comes trailing 3-2 to two right here on the Iowa Cubs Radio Network. Third inning here at Principal Park. I Cubs trailing the Redbirds 3 to 2. Alec Mills gave up a three run, two out homer to Jose Martinez in the second. 
Here in the third, Randy Arozarena, Graver Robertson, and John Nagowski here to start things off. Throughout the inning, we'll give you our associated computer system stat of the game brought to you by ACS, your technology compass. And that stat and segment facilitated by John Rogers, ICUP sales executive. Mills. And a sharp first inning, but again, three runs in the second. Cubs and the White Sox underway at uh, the White Sox home park. It's scoreless, headed to the bottom of the second. First pitch, hits the inside quarter for a strike out of 1-1. It's at the White Sox home park. I still, whenever I think of the White Sox home field, I think of it as Comiskey. Mid Comiskey, But yeah. now it's changed five times since. Misses outside. Count 1-1. One one. It's now guaranteed, guaranteed rate right yeah. field. Doesn't feel right. One ball, one strike, and the pitch. Curveball, inside corner called strike at 64 miles per hour. One-two pitch. And that's club right field, but right at Mark Zagunas. Takes two steps in, makes the catch. One away here in the third. That'll bring up Kramer Robertson. Toronto, they lead Baltimore 3-0 through 5. Cleveland ahead at Cincinnati, 1-0 in the 5th. Red Sox top the Tigers 2-1 in the top of the 5th in Detroit. Former Iowa Cub, Jamie Candelario, had two home runs last night for the Tigers. Phillies are blanking the Mets 4-zip in the 5th. First pitch to Robertson. It's the inside corner for a strike, Connell and 1. Tampa Bay batting in the, uh, well, it's now after five. In Tampa Bay, Rays two, Yankees one. Atlanta at home leads Miami 3 0 in the third. A one pitch, swing and a miss, strike two. Washington over Kansas City, 1 0 in the top of the fifth. At Pittsburgh, the Bucks lead the Brewers 2 0 in the bottom of the fourth. Angels at Houston, no score, bottom of the second. 0 oh, 2, swing and a miss, strike three. Another slow curveball. 65 miles per hour, and Kramer Robertson was about, I would say, three days ahead of that. Guys just aren't used to seeing that pitch, that velocity, with good movement on it. And same relative arm angle. Angels in Houston, no score, bottom of the second. Texas and Minnesota, no score in the top of the second, and you're up to date. First pitch misses outside, count one of them. Futures game being played at Progressive Field, and it's another one of those stadiums that's no more by a different name, Jacobs Field. Pitch misses outside, count one to one. Then the All-Star game in Cleveland the next day. One ball, one strike, two outs. Kick of the pitch here by Alec Mills. Broken back grounder towards third, charging in Gian Brody. Fields throws on the run to first, and it gets Nagowski. Good play to his left, flashing in front of a shortstop. Nice job there, Trent. 5-3 put out, and that ends the inning. 1-2-3 frame for Alec Mills. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. We'll go to the bottom of the third. High comes down 3-2 right here on the Iowa Cubs radio network.
sends it with Nate Court as is directed. Thanks for listening to 940 KPSZ. Bottom three here at Principal Park. Alex Cohen, Dean Ellis here on the call. Noah Manderfell back at the station. Uh, it comes down by a score of three to two, but they have Donnie Dweez, Dixon Machado, Ian Happ up against Henesis Cabrera to begin the third. First pitch misses outside. Count one and oh. Again, it's time for our Associated Computer Systems stat of the game. ACS, your technology compass. 1-0. Attacks the outside quarter for a strike. Count one and one. I believe we had this stat last year, but on July 12, 1966, the All-Star game at St. Louis was played in a scorching 105-degree heat, 90% humidity. John Rogers attended that game as an 8-year-old with his dad, brother, and several neighborhood friends. Hopefully he hydrated. 1-2. Sprouted right side foul. Count 1-2, sort of a... Half swing, half chop, or, or chop protection swing there by Dweez. Yeah, pitch in on him as if he expected maybe it to break over the plate, but uh, sends it foul to stay alive. One, two. Popped up. Middle of the infield. Cabrera goes back now. The first baseman, Nagowski, comes in and makes the basket catch. We've seen the pitchers here today want to get involved in some fielding practices, and they do get called off at the last second. One away here in the third. I'll bring up Dixon Machado. Donnie out in front of that off-speed pitch. Good job by Cabrera. Machado. He settled down, had that uh, three up, three down second. He's now set down seven straight. First pitch, grounded sharply to short. Backhanded play by Martinez. He picks up, fires the first, and gets Machado. That was a hard hit ball. Down on a knee, Martinez fielded the ball. Five and a half hole, got up from the outfield grass, fires to first, and a great play to get Dixon. Nice play. Got him by two steps. Hit hard and a strong throw and a quick release. Well, he's a player of the game today, a three-run homer and a couple of nice defensive plays. So here's Ian Happ, nine for his last 18. Lefty versus righty pitch. Fastball misses inside. One ball, no strikes. One up. It's the outside quarter for a strike. Count one to one. Three two high Cubs trail. Bottom of the third. Two outs. Ian Happ. Two run single in the first pitch. Line drive right field. Going back Garcia. He can't get it. That ball will dent the wall. Happ heading for second. And he'll get there. Sliding it safely with the double. He might have slid into the back too quickly. Happ gets up slowly, but he's okay. And now 10 for his last 19. Knew he had to hustle with a strong arm that Garcia possesses. And it was a strong and accurate throw. He is really swinging the bat well in general, but Dean specifically from the right side. And going the other way that time, using the whole field with power. He's got even left-handed. He can hit home runs in left field. It seems like there's still so much upside to Ian Happ. A lot of potential there. First pitch. Take it down the middle to Zagunas for a strike. Count of 1-1. One, one. Now let's see if Mark can drive him in, get some two-out lightning here to tie the game. And again, Cabrera prone to the home run ball. Zagunas, three homers this year, 13 doubles. Limited time with the I-Cubs. And the 0-1 pitch. Misses outside. One ball, one strike. 3-2, Cubs trail. One ball, one strike. And the pitch. Misses outside. Count two and one. We have Brian Smith listening in from at Cub Prospects. Dean, he really likes that Ephus curveball from Alec Mills. I think we do too. 
I don't know that I'd quite label it an EFIS yet. Needs more of a loop to be an EFIS, at least in my opinion. Two balls, one strike, and the pitch misses inside. Count three and one. So for you, an EFIS is not based on velocity. It's based on well, the bell you, curve. You loop the ball, it's going to be more in the 50 miles per hour, yeah. Fair enough. The Gallic might have some work to do then to make it an EFIS. <laughs> no, nah, he's doing just fine. Three balls, one strike. Fastball at 88 to 90, the breaking ball in the mid-60s. Pitch hits the outside wow. quarter for a strike. That looks high. That looks high and outside. Count three at two. Big pitch here for Cabrera. Let's see what he has in mind. If he'll challenge Mark with a fastball, first base open. Taylor Davis on deck. Ian Happ on second. Cabrera, belt high set. 3-2 pitch. Found back just to the right of us here in the press box. Off-speed pitch there. Up. Mark just missed on it. Cabrera might have gotten away with one. He retired eight in a row before that double there by Ian. Ian looks to be the guy he hasn't figured out today with a single and a double. Two of the three Iowa hits. 3-2 count. Looking back at second. Cabrera now fires. Curveball outside corner called third strike. Not sure what Hennessy Cabrera did there. He spun around and looked at second. Maybe he thought the ball was getting hit back to him. Instead, a called third strike. It ends the inning. No runs, a hit, no errors. One man left on base. We'll go to the fourth. High Cubs down 3-2 to two right here on the Iowa Cubs radio network. Good song. Noah Manderfell bringing us back here in the fourth inning. High comes down by a score of three to two. Little West Virginia, take me home, country row. Well, we're not in West Virginia right now. Des Moines, Iowa, beautiful Principal Park. Alec Mills will see. And Olus Garcia here to start the fourth. And for the middle innings of play-by-play, -play, I'll send it to my partner here in the booth. Here's Dean Ellis. Thanks, Alex. Here's the pitch by Alec Mills. And a pitch down the middle, fouled back out of play to the screen. A quick strike. Wind is picked up as we begin the fourth inning, blowing from right to left. At game time, just six miles per hour, but more 10 to 12 right now. Could be a factor right to left as that's a called strike. 0-2 and, and Garcia, he popped out leading off the second. Now he leads off the fourth. Thomas on deck and then Hudson in a 3-2 game. It's another one-run contest. All three games in this series up until today decided by a run. The Cubs come back win. They walk off victory two in the bottom of the ninth Thursday, 5-4. Here's a pop fly left center field. Donnie Dewey's in range and the catch is made for out number one. And then the Cubs, another comeback win on Friday. A last at bat, bottom of the eighth, two-run comeback to prevail 9-8. to eight. Redbirds had three errors in each of the first two games that hurt them. Blown saves in each game. But they did a good job last night in winning 5-4. to four. Their bullpen gave them four one-hit, no-run innings in relief. There's the slow curve, fouled back out of play for a strike. Lane Thomas, a single, a run scored. Lopez had a two-out single. This is all back in the second, and then Martinez hit a home run. Line drive down the left field line. That's a foul ball by a few feet near the Iowa bullpen. Strike two, 0-2 oh on Thomas. Mills, since allowing the home run, has retired five straight. Three to two game. Alec has walked one, struck out two. He's had six flyouts, one ground out. He's a fly ball pitcher on the season, 78 fly outs, 62 ground outs. There's a slow curve, a two hopper to first. Castillo down to a knee for the fielding play and to first base for the self-service out. Two away, 
Nobody on for Hudson. He popped out to Deweese in the second. Now we're starting to get to that pace of play. Aggressive approach for both teams. Well, Alec typically a strike thrower. Cabrera settling in a bit after a shaky first inning. He's uh, finding the uh, zone for the most part. Mills in his career, eight seasons of minor league ball, averages only 2.2 walks per nine innings. Eight strikeouts per nine in his minor league career. Here's ball one, low and away on Hudson, who's aggressive up there, doesn't walk very often. Way back to June, the last time he walked, about a month ago. Here's a high fly ball, right center field between Zagunas and Happ, and calling and catching Mark Zagunas. It looked like the wind uh, brought it back just a bit, and it's a quick three up, three down, top of the four. It's still 3 2. Memphis ahead into one, 3 2 lead. Martinez, the guy that will hit second in the fifth inning, blasted the home run. For the Cubs, they scored in their first three batters. Deweese a walk, Machado a double, and Happ a two run single on a 3 2 pitch. Poked up the middle. There's a pitch up high to Taylor Davis. Ball one from Henesis Cabrera. Zach Short on deck and then Trent Giambroni in the bottom of the fourth. Inside for ball two. Looked like a curve there. Redbirds begin play today in last place. 36 and 53 in the American North. Steve Selby, the voice of the Redbirds, was just here reminding us the team two years ago and they won the championship, lost only 50 games for the season. Last year they lost only 57 in winning another championship. There's ball two, two and one. And the left-hander deals outside ball three, three and one on Taylor Davis. Iowa down by a run. Redbirds, though, early on were in contention Back on May 14th, as Taylor takes a strike to run it full. Fastball at 95. He's got an easy delivery, but throws hard. Fluid. They were 21 and 18, the Redbirds. Three games out of first place. There's ball four, high and outside. Not even close. Lead off, free pass. And now Zach Short, who struck out swinging in the first. So again, since that time, they've had 15 wins and uh, 35 losses. It's just a 30% winning percentage. Not very good in any sport. Double play depth in the infield. Cabrera's pitch, a high strike call there in the outside corner. That appeared to be an expanded zone. Giambroni on deck. Nagowski holding the runner to the belt. Cabrera, he brings it home, and a pitch low and inside. One ball, one strike. Amish House Furniture, they sponsor our baseball trivia question each and every game. You can email Alex at alexc at iowacubs.com. First correct answer wins four reserve grandstand certificates for an Iowa Cubs home game later this year. There's a line drive hit the left field between Martinez and Robertson. In the left, and the Iowa Cubs have it going. Two on, nobody out. Really nice to see Zach Short back in the lineup, picking up right where he left off to begin the year. He doubled yesterday, and that ball stroked in the hole between Short and third. This team, when you put together all the moving parts, the Ian Haps, the Mark Zagunas, the Trenchy and Bronies, the Zach Shorts, very talented. Eight game hit streak. He's only played nine as an I Cub this year due to the injury. He's at first base, Davis at second. Zach donning a running glove. Looks like one of those mittens that Alex uses is in his kitchen. That's right. All the cooking he does. Big There's time. a pitch low for a ball. You know what, Dean? I'm not as much of a cooker, big time baker. You know, easy bake oven, a crush it. Brownies, banana bread, cookies. Making me hungry. Thanks for bringing them in all the time. Two well, on, well, nobody I, out. I do. They're just in my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> they don't make it past the first floor. No. Huh? Popped up out of play left side. So, again, no action for three days in our league other than the all-star game. 
Cullen Ray, he'll be there for the I Cubs. They'll be here on AM 940, right, Alex? They will be. That is correct. They play Trent to right field. Plenty of room in left center. Double play depth in the infield and the 1-1 delivery. Outside changeup, ball two, two and one. A little surprising that Colin is not starting the game. Starter will be, I believe, Jake Woodford. Who's on this Memphis team, not pitching this series. Hudson the sign, Cabrera with the pitch. In the air, left field, hit deep. Back goes Thomas, looking up at this one. Bye-bye, bye-bye baseball. Giambroni with a home run, and the Cubs are now ahead 5-3. to three. Again, that's been a nemesis for Cabrera this season. He's allowed 13 home runs as Trent travels that home run highway for the 19th time. He's up to 48 runs batted in. Each team now with a three-run home run today. By the way, as far as Alec Mills is concerned, that's the first three-run home run Mills had allowed this season. Looks like the second that Cabrera has given up. There's a foul back out of play just to our right Ooh. near Steve oh, Selby. And oh, 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 look out. He's going to use the hat as a glove. Eric Castillo down a strike. Right-handed stick. Cuts and misses at a pitch up and away. 0-2. Well, the Cubs, three batters into the game, had two runs, three batters here in the fourth. They've got three runs and a 5-3 lead. Thomas again deep and left, playing Castillo to pull the ball. Plenty of room in left center. A Rosarena way over to the alley in right center. That pitch wasted up and away. Ball one, one and two. I think catcher Hudson, pitcher Cabrera have noticed the a call there up and away for strikes. They're trying to hit that spot. Outside corner up around the letters. Here's the one two timeout. How about Trent Giambroni? 19 homers, 17 doubles, 13 stolen bases at the All Star break. Huh. And he had a two, three week stretch at least where he really was scuffling and kind of battled his way through that, made some adjustments and is hitting the ball again with authority. There's ball two, the break-even pitch. Outside, full count. Pitch count building on Cabrera. He threw 22 pitches in the first, 10 in the second, 16 last inning, and 18 this inning. And again, hasn't registered an out. Mills on deck, the payoff to Castillo. Fouled at the plate. Still three and two, now we can Get to our Amish House Furniture Baseball Trivia question. You can name the Cardinals Hall of Famer, along with Hank Aaron and Willie Mays, that played in a record 24 All-Star games. A Cardinal. Seems like there's a lot of Cardinal questions with John Rogers I put want, these together. You know what? I wonder why. Don't really understand. It's a foul back off to our right out of play. Castillo, another good swing. Count remains loaded. Amish House Furniture, they present the baseball trivia as Cabrera deals at 3-2. Hit back up the middle past Cabrera, and this one will sneak in the center field. Martinez, a diving attempt, couldn't stop it. If he had, still a hit. But it rolls into shallow center and dies where Rosarina picks it up. You hear about that the dying quail pop fly that drops in there. I'm not sure what you call that one. But a roller to center. For a base hit. Dying quail might be my favorite adjective for <laughs> any sort of thing that happens around baseball. Here's Alec Mills in a bunt situation. Charging a third, Robertson. And the pitch missed outside, ball one. So the Cubs with a 5-3 to three lead now in the home run by Giambroni. Again, the Cardinal Hall of Famer, along with Hank Aaron and Willie Mays, those three greats, a record 24 All-Star games. You might recall there was a time when they, a few years, they played two All-Star games in the same season. There's ball two, Hine outside. And this guy, one of the all-time great hitters. I think There's I know a who it is. statue for him. Oh, yeah, I definitely know who it is then. 
With Amish House Furniture, you'll actually feel the difference in their furniture. The Amish craftsmen apply a three-step finish that makes it hard not to run your fingers across the wood surface as Mills a foul ball bunt to the right, strike one. Amish House Furniture, you'll feel the difference. Two and one here on Alec Mills. Another entertaining game here at Principal Park. Back and forth. Cubs led early. Redbirds forged a 3-2 lead and a home run. Now it's 5-3 Iowa in the Giambroni home run. Mills to bunt, pulled it back from an inside fastball off the plate for ball three, three and one. He'd take a walk right here. He would. Donnie Dewey's on deck. Mills pulls that bat back and is a little frustrated. Thought that was a little inside. And I guess he doesn't want to get hit by a 94-mile-per-hour fastball. I wonder why. Throw to first. He's still showing bunt. Mills two for 13 as an Iowa Cub this year. A couple of sacrifices. Struck out 10 times, including earlier today. No bunt, pulled it back, and he took it low. He does draw a walk. So Castillo to second. The Cubs already three runs in. They have two men on, nobody out. And there will be activity in the Memphis bullpen. And now the trainer, the first guy out of their dugout, Bears trainer looking Dan at his, Martin. Looking at his pitching fingers. Might be developing a blister. They'll come out and take a look at him. Donnie DeWeese, who oh. hit for the I Cubs. I wouldn't be shocked if we see a pitching change here. Again, that Amish House Furniture Baseball Trivia question, email Alex at alexc at iowacubs.com. Also let us know on social media, at Iowa Cubs, at Voice of Cohen, or at Dean Ellis. With the injury delay, gives us a chance to go to our This Day in Baseball History feature, brought to you by Shorty's Barbecue. Don't settle for that same old barbecue sandwich that everyone else is having. You got a summer event or for lunch or for dinner, head out to Shorty's BBQ in Johnston. There's an E in there. If you go to the web, it's S-H-O-R-T-E-S-B-B-Q.com. You'll find something special for your summer event at Shorty's BBQ.com. Or check them out in Johnston, and there will be a pitching change. The right-hander coming in will be given as much time as he needs. Which on a nice warm day like today might not be a lot. We'll find out. We'll step aside. With the score, the Cubs five, Redbirds three, two on, nobody out. Dewey's against a right-hander when we come back on AM 940, the web at iowacubs.com. And that win came two months before his 31st birthday. So at the age of 30, he was the youngest guy ever to win 300 games. Probably won't see that again. Boy, how about this note from 1914? Uh, suffering heavy losses from the Federal League competition in Baltimore. Jack Dunn, the owner of the International League Orioles, would offer Babe Ruth. Remember, Babe was from Baltimore, so he was playing for the Baltimore team there. Uh, the owner of the team, the Orioles, he offered Babe Ruth plus Ernie Shore and a catcher by the name of Ben Egan for $10,000 to his old friend Connie Mack. Well, Connie Mack said no. He was pleading the poverty case, didn't have the money. Cincinnati, which had a working agreement giving them the choice of two players, would take outfielder George Twombly and the shortstop Claude Derrick. And Dunn finally was able to send that threesome. Babe Ruth, Ernie Shore, and Ben Egan finally got rid of him, sent him to the new owner of the Red Sox, Joe Lannon, for supposedly $25,000. Nobody wanted Babe Ruth. And, of course, then the Red Sox later on would sell Babe. And they needed some money, sold his contract to the Yankees. Things are different this day and age. And the new pitcher, Elledge, is ready. 
Here's Donnie Dewees with Castillo at second, Mills at first base. Nobody out. They're a little suspicious of a bunt again. I'd let him swing away. New pitcher. Donnie to bunt, drops it foul, left side of strike. For the season, Elledge in his sixth game, he's 1-1, one and one, 11.25 ERA, but just four innings in this league. Cubs, three runs in. Robertson still plants himself on the grass at third. Nagowski has backed up a couple of steps. First baseman, they play about halfway. Shortstop Martinez, second baseman Lopez, and the 0-1 pitch. Bunted right side, nice bunt. Nagowski picks it up, throws back to first, just in time to Lopez covering, and Donnie Deweese advances the runner. You know what, Donnie's kind of a Don, uh, Doug DeCenzo type player. Doug could bunt, that's a good bunt. Donnie get in for a little bit of power. On pace for 20 homers this year. Yeah, Doug not a big home run guy, but it was a different game definitely back then. Does his job, though. Doug, one of the first guys out of that dugout to congratulate Donnie on the sacrifice. That's his third of the year, the team's 21st. So now it's second and third, forcing the Redbirds to bring the infield in. Pitch by the right-hander, curls outside, ball one on Dixon Machado, was doubled, scored, and grounded out. Seth Elledge looking into catcher Hudson for the sign. Outfield straight away. That's a strike down the middle, one and one. Sam Tui Vilala was traded to Seattle for Elledge last July. Elledge went to Dallas Baptist University. It's a big baseball school. It is a good one. This is his. Uh, Debut season at the AAA level. Off speed, swing and a miss. Good location up and in. Strike two, one and two, one out. De Sorry about that. A big league score update. Phillies and Mets. Peter Alonzo. Two run home run wow. broken. Aaron Nola home run. But Peter Alonzo at the All Star break as a rookie has 30 homers and 68 runs batted in. The stretch the pitch. Lone away, good block by Hudson. Got the body out there. It bounced up uh, off his chest protector, keeping Castillo at third, Mills at second. One away, three runs in, and a Jim Browning home run. Cabrera out of the game. We believe a blister issue as they were looking at his pitching fingers. So he departed, and Elledge is in. Ian Happ on deck. He'll now bat left-handed. And the 2-2 pitch, breaking ball, bounce to third, right at the bag, fielded by Robertson. He throws it away at first base. Scoring is Castillo. Mills held at third, down to second. Machado, Robertson had a rough time two nights ago making throws to first base, and those uh, problems continued today. That throw took off, and despite a high leap there by Nagowski, who's a six-footer, could not snag it or stop it. And that'll be an error to make it a 6-3 ball game. That is Kramer Robertson's fifth throwing error of the series. He had one in game one. He had, well, three actions. So it's his fourth throwing error. He had three in game two, one that was then ruled a hit. So he has four throwing errors this series. They're in tight. Tap the batter. Machado at second. Mills at third. Pitched by Elledge. He did his job right there. Got that ground ball. It's fouled out of play left side, a quick strike. For the moment, it's considered an unearned run as Castillo was at the bag. In fact, good job by him with a bouncing ball that was fielded right at the bag by Robertson. Eric got back to the base, was standing in the base, and Robertson is throwing a stray there at first base. The Cubs, for the most part, have cashed in on the Redbird mistakes in this series, except last night they had some other chances. As Memphis held on for the one-run win. Inside, backed him off the plate. Fastball 94. One and one the count. One out. Half, by the way, the eighth batter this inning with a single and a double today. Right handed with two RBI. Again, just above 200 as a left handed hitter, the switch hitting Ian Happ. And you get usually about twice as many ABs left handed, right handed, the switch batters. Bouncing ball to first. Nagowski fielding. Throws home, but Mills is not running in. Throw down to second, the tag, and safe at second is Machado. 
<laughs> Interesting play. Nagowski thought Mills was going to try to score, so instead of getting the out at first base, he threw home to the catcher, Hudson. Mills scampered back to third. Meanwhile, Machado darting back to second. Hudson gunned it down there, but he was safe, and so the bases are loaded on a fielder's choice. That's a very <laughs> exciting fielder's choice. Yeah, I, I don't think I've seen that, and this is really killing the, the getaway day pace of play right now. <laughs> wow. Not to mention the Redbirds with an air, and now that play. I don't think I've ever seen that, to be, to be completely honest. Good decision by Mills to change his mind. Nagowski was deep. Typically a more experienced runner would score in that ground ball. Here's the pitch now. The base is loaded. And he fooled his catcher but got a strike. Hudson wants a timeout to talk about the signs. I think he was looking fastball. Got a ball, a breaking ball that dropped on him. He knocked it down. Strike call is right down the middle. And with the count 0-1, Mark Zagunas batting with the bases juiced to the Cubs ahead. 6-3, a chance to break it open. The Iowa Cubs... Mark this year, two for four, two R or four RBI with the bases loaded. It's Mills at third, Machado at second, half at first. So Ian's on base for the third straight time in that fielder's choice. They've got the sign straight. They're playing about halfway at second and short. And the pitch by Elledge. Missing the outside corner, close but missing for ball one, one and one. Cubs lead six to three, four runs in. Lots of crooked numbers on the board. Cubs got two in the first, Redbirds three in the second, Iowa four here in the fourth. One away, base is loaded, and the one-one pitch. That's down low, good block by Hudson, ball two, two and one. Final game of the series. Still have quite a few games left with these Redbirds. They'll be back here to finish the season. And the Cubs play there August 15, 16, 17, and 18. So we finish the season with the Redbirds, which brings back memories of the 2010 season when we finished the Redbirds here with the playoffs on the line, the Ryan Sandberg year, and they won the tiebreaker made the playoffs. The Cubs did not. Both teams tied with the best record in the league, and the Cubs didn't make the playoffs. There's a pitch to Zagunas up and away for ball three, three and one. It was quite the series. Extra inning games. Ryan Sandberg kicked out of the last game of the year. Base is loaded here. Zagunas, a good hitter's count. 3-1 delivery by Elledge. Caught the outside corner. Full count. A lot of drama. Three and two, one away, bases loaded here in the fourth inning. Taylor Davis, the man on deck. Again, Zagunas, the ninth batter this inning. Deep and a right in center and right. The left fielder, Thomas, straight away. Plenty of room in left center. The stretch and the pitch. Fouled out of play right side. A pitch away. Good job by Zagunas to protect the plate. Stay alive at three and two. Mills, a long time on the bases. Remember, he drew a walk earlier. This inning began with a walk to the man on deck, Taylor Davis. Zach Short a single. Trent Giambroni a home run. Gave Iowa a five to three lead. They've added another run, an unearned run to make it six to three. And now the payoff again to Zagunas. Bouncing ball in the hole. The hole plugged by Nagowski to second for one. Back to first. Elledge not there in time. It's a run batted in for Zagunas to make it 7-3. to three. Nagowski to Martinez for the out at second base on Hap. But Zagunas, he runs pretty well. Has himself an RBI hit. Nice at bat by Mark Zagunas for his 19th RBI. And this is 30th game. That's a pretty good ratio. As Mills scored. And let's see, I guess that would be another unearned run, wouldn't it? Inning should be over if you're the Redbirds because of the air on Robertson. 7-3, to three, the Cubs ahead. Taylor Davis bats for the second time. He got it going with that free pass. Zagun is held at first by Nagowski. Boy, good-looking fielding first baseman, Nagowski. There's a pitch outside, ball one. Fun to watch a guy like him and the Cubs' Jim Adusi play first base. And they each have a strong arm. 
Pickoff attempt, the tag, he's out of there. Zagunas picked off at first base. Had taken a step or two towards second just in getting his lead, but a good quick throw there, good uh, turn. 940 KPSZ. Hey, we're awake out here at Principal Park. Always got to wake up before you go, go. Cubs have that lead now. 7-3, seven, seven runs, six hits. Memphis, three runs, three hits in the game's air. Alec Mills has set down seven straight. Remember, he was on the bases quite a bit, running the bases. In the uh, bottom of the fourth, now in the fifth inning, he'll face the tail end of their lineup, Lopez, Martinez, and Elledge, their pitcher. There is more action in the Memphis bullpen. He might pinch hit for Elledge. We'll see. Cubs a four-run cushion, and a pitch loan inside, ball one. We have him down for only being behind six batters. Six out of 16. Lopez singled and scored in the second. The guy on deck accounted for their offense, Martinez, with a three-run tater in the second. There's ball two outside. Zagunas playing a deep right field. The wind has let up a bit again, blowing from right to left. Inning, inning and a half. It was blowing in a bit more. There's a strike, two and one. Jesus Cruz in their pen. There's a called strike, two and two. Taylor Davis puts the sign down. That's low and inside. Breaking ball missing. Full count. Don't want to walk him with a four-run lead here in the fifth. This day in baseball history brought to you by Shorty's Barbecue. We've got a couple of other notes to pass along. This day in 91, Nolan Ryan just missed out on his eighth no-hitter. 3-2 pitch, fouled back out of play. The Angels' Dave Winfield had a single in the eighth inning. Ryan, though, would win the game 7-0, and that put Texas in first place at the All-Star break. I think Nolan Ryan had 10 or 12 one-hit games. He and Bob Feller had a lot of one-hitters. Swing and a miss. He got baffled by the breaking ball, but a foul tip stays alive. Lopez just made some contact, stays alive at 3-2. and two. And now we'll see the eighth pitch of the at-bat. Off speed, fouled at the plate again. Does a good job making contact, trying to put the ball in play. Not a home run hitter at 5'8", 175 pounds. Just turned 24 at the end of June out of Mesa. Irving Lopez. Open batting stance, crouching. And draws a walk, nice A-B. That pitch low and inside. Redbirds get the leadoff man aboard. Fifth inning, trailing the Iowa Cubs 7-3. Martinez is next. Jose Martinez, a switch hitter. To that left-handed, blasted a home run in the second. And already on deck is Chania. He's looked pretty good as a pinch batter in the series. He had a double pinch hitting Friday night. Was 0 for 1 off the bench last night. Lined out. Here's ball one, low and away. You might remember this one from July 7th, 1993 at Wrigley Field. The Cincinnati left-hander. Remember I said left-hander. Lopez leads at first. Castillo holding him on. The pitch by Mills. Outside, 2-0 the count. Tom Browning. Made a decision. He thought he had seen enough from the view of the dugout at Wrigley Field. Not the best dugouts back in those days. They've, of course, uh, redid the dugouts here in recent years, but a smaller dugout. And Browning just had enough of being in the visiting dugout at Wrigley Field, so he left Wrigley Field. He watched the, his team, the Reds, beat the Cubs 4-3. to three. Watched from the roof of that a building, that three-story building across from Sheffield Avenue. He did receive a fine for $500 for leaving the dugout, not to mention the ballpark during a game, but I'm sure Tom Browning would say it was worth it. Here's the 2-0 pitch. 
popped him up. Machado gauging this one and reels it in a couple of steps into left center field for the out. One shortstop retires the other. Lopez at first base. And Chania is going to pinch hit. Elledge had another short appearance. Again, just the other night, just uh, one pitch. And today, threw a few more pitches, but Chania or Elridge went an inning. No hits, no runs, no walks, no strikeouts. 7-3 Cub lead. One away now, double play would end the inning. Pitch by Mills. Right down the middle for a strike. Apparently Cruz will be the new pitcher. In the bottom of the fifth. This day in baseball history brought to you by Shorty's Barbecue. The 0-1 on the ground to third. Backhanded behind the bag. Giambroni in foul territory. Fires to first. Good play by Trent. Over to Castillo. Chiania is out of there with Lopez down to second. Had to range to foul territory. Set himself and fired across the diamond for the out. Giambroni has been very good whatever position he plays, and that is very difficult to switch from, well, the outfield to third, second to left to third. He's played some first base, a little shortstop, and make all the plays, and it's hard in the arm. As you would guess, throws a little different from the outfield compared to infield and different from second compared to third. There's a called strike. Two away, a Rosa Reina, the batter. He's popped out, flied out, their leadoff man. First time he has not let off an inning. 7 3 Cub lead, fifth inning. And a pitch inside a ball, one and one. Memphis, in winning last night, 5 to 4, did a good job in the clutch category. They were 4 for 9, runners in scoring position. And again, their bullpen gave them four scoreless innings. Three different guys last night. There's the slow curveball for strike in the inside corner, 66 miles an hour. Took route 66 and got himself a strike. Outfield to right field. Last game of the series, last game of the homestand. And Mills a 1-2 pitch. Hardy ground ball, fair ball, base hit between Castillo, first base right field line. Scoring is Lopez. A Rosa Arena halfway to second changes his mind. Machado throws back to first. He is safe. Zagunas, a good job getting to that base hit down the line. Fired to second. And Machado rifled it over to Castillo and scrambling back, barely safe, was a Rosa Arena. Give him an RBI single. That's his 17th run batted in, and it's now a 7 to 4 ball game. But he's not in scoring position, a Rosa Arena. Good outfield play by Zagunas. Robertson, the batter, has walked and struck out. Robertson, 5'10", 165 pounds. He's 24 years of age out of McGregor, Texas, it says. He's a pitch off his hands. He popped foul out of play. It'll be a souvenir for somebody. Yeah, that's our buddy Russ down there. He got that baseball. He'll give away to a youngster. He's got his left arm in a sling. Ground ball to second. It's sharply to short. Fielding, throwing on to Castillo for the out at first base. That ends the inning. Robertson grounds out. Memphis took advantage of the leadoff walk. One run, one hit, one left. Half. It is Cruz into the game, Jesus Cruz, 6'1", 225 pounds. Boy, he looks taller, looks bigger. 6'1", 225, 24 years of age out of Mexico. A lot of good arms coming out of Mexico in recent years. The Cubs have been very diligent down there recent seasons. A lot of young guys in the organization from Mexico, more so pitchers. That's a low strike. Taylor Davis leads off. 7-4, bottom of the fifth inning, Cubs ahead. A 
This will be Cruz, his second outing of the series. There's ball one, one and one. He pitched an inning with a strikeout, everything else a zero in the first game on Thursday. For the season, this is his 30th game. He's two and five, all games in relief. Four save opportunities, no saves. Again, their bullpen, especially at the end, has uh, failed them this season with 17 blown saves. Two and one, now the count. Ball three, alone outside. Taylor with a walk, a run score to fly out is 0 for 1. Cubs batted around for that five run fourth inning, now hitting here in the bottom of the fifth. Again, the All-Star break for three days. The AAA All-Star game is on Wednesday. Iowa will pick up play at Round Rock, July 11, 12, 13, and 14. And then here, a home series with Oklahoma City, July 15th through the 18th. Ball four was high to Taylor Davis, another leadoff walk. That precipitated their five-run fourth. Zach Short, one for two with a single. The Cubs, seven runs on six hits. Ian Happ has two hits, single and a double, two RBI. Trent Giambroni, a three-run home run. The leadoff guy, Donnie DeWeese, doesn't have a hit, but a run score, a walk, a sacrifice. There's ball one. As the new pitcher, Cruz, can't find the plate. Scanning the signs of catcher Hudson. Second baseman Lopez, shortstop Martinez, play for the double play and a swing and a foul back out of play. Good cut by Zach. Looks like he's got his timing down. And the count 1 1. Not that far away from the high school tournament. You mentioned the four games here with Oklahoma City, the 15th through the 18th. There's a pitch in to Zach for ball 2 2 and 1. Also in July, a three-game series with Round Rock, 26, 27, 28. So only 11 home games in July in the schedule. Go to iowacubs.com for ticket information. There's a high strike call, two and two. He's been pretty consistent, Ramon De Jesus, with a higher strike. Two and two, nobody out. Davis at first base in the bottom of the fifth inning. You're here at the ballpark. Head down to the merchandise store here at Principal Park. They've got uh, still plenty of inventory, great baseball material, shirts and hats and unique items. There's ball three, close pitch, but taken to run the count full. Davis, a slow runner, shouldn't be moving here. And Zach, pretty good contact hitter. The right-handed batter waits on the payoff. The high set, here it is. It's high for ball four. Back-to-back -back walks. Jose, Jose or Jesus Cruz not cruising along here in the bottom of the fifth. He's walked Davis and short. Trent Giambroni not up there to bunt. Cracked a home run with two men on last inning. Iowa lead 7-4. Another good crowd today. I'm going to guess, and I'm probably low on this one, Alex. I wrote this number down a couple of innings back, but I'll All stay right. with the same number. 7,887. Another good crowd, though, this Sunday. Just a beautiful day, great summer day. Caught the outside corner there, a strike. 7-5-5-5. Five, five, five. Okay. I need a victory, Dean. Struggling right now. What, you lose one, you're struggling? Uh, two in a row. Come on. Two in a row. Here's the stretch in the pitch. Cruz at uh, 12 pitches, eight balls. Walk two. There's another one up and in. Not time for the pitching coach to go out there. One and one on Jim Brony. Nobody out. Eric Castillo on deck. This is Dean Ellis with Alex Cohen. Noah Manderfeld, our studio engineer. They played a right in the outfield. Deep into left center, Thomas. Jim Brony's homer to left. Way outside. Good save across his body. Stabbing that one was the catcher, Hudson. 
Joe came or uh, yeah Joe Hudson came along too late could have played with Jason Bay could have had the Hudson Bay combo. Nah. The stretch in the pitch here by Cruz Jesus Cruz. That's a strike at the knees looks like he had better success with his breaking stuff can't command the fastball. Evens accounted 2 2. Trying to find his rhythm. Let's see if the Cubs can. Put some more crooked numbers on the board. They got two in the first five in the fourth batting to the bottom of the fifth with that seven to four lead in the Redbirds. Here's the break even pitch low and outside fastball 96 great velocity but outside the zone it's a full count. Between Cabrera. And now Cruz I've got him down for nine. Three ball counts today. Cabrera walked three Cruz has walked two back to back the two hitters he faced on base with walks Davis at second short at first pitch to Giambroni struck him out swinging. There's the fastball 96 up and in. One away that's a huge out for Cruz and the Redbirds might give him some confidence in the fastball. Eric Castillo got to be looking for that fastball even though it's been out of the zone for the most part but. We'll see what catcher Hudson has in mind. He's still playing the right field on the right handed batter. Swing and a miss. That pitch at 89 appeared to drop. Strike one Castillo. He's popped out and singled, scored last inning. Cabrera, their starter, went three, gave up six hits, seven runs, five earned, walked three, struck out three. Called strike. So Cruz has found the rhythm. The strikeout of Giambroni now 0 2 in Castile with the pitcher Mills on deck. It's a huge batter for Cruz with the pitcher coming up next. More action in their bullpen. Swing and a miss. Breaking ball way outside. Chasing and missing for the strikeout. Two walks, two strikeouts. Alec Mills, the batter. It's a left hander just got up that looks like Hunter Cervenka former Iowa Cub. The burly lefty. Cruz the right hander. With the pause and the pitch. Strike on the outside corner. Fastball 96. Any more of these fastballs 95 98. It'll look that fast because we're so used to it. Breaking ball that slider. Snapped in there for strike two. Oh, something clicked for Cruz. Yeah. <laughs> so it's 0 2 on Alec 2 on 2 out. Cubs ahead by three here in the fifth. Way outside good save by Hudson on a breaking ball. They thought Alec might chase that one Castillo. He chased one away a breaking pitch at 0 2 but it was a little closer to the plate than that one. Good dexterity by Hudson to get to that one. Well Cruz found his control. He pushed the right button. And he deals one two to Mills. Low for ball two, two and two. Deuces wild, two and two, two out, two on. We're in the fifth inning. Cubs have that seven four lead. Hudson puts the sign down. You got to think he'll go back to his number fastball, one, the fastball. Yeah. The pitcher, opposing pitcher batting. Alec with a strikeout, a walk today, a run scored. Outside with his fastball. Now he lost it. It's uh, three and two on Mills. The runner's moving here. Short at first. Davis at second. Three and two, two away. Boy, the fielders, they're back on their heels now, aren't they? Two walks, two strikeouts, 25 pitches. No action for the fielders. And the pitch. He walked him. Missed low and outside. He's walked the bases loaded. Donnie Deweese, the batter. Donnie's going to be looking first pitch fastball. 
Left-hander in the bullpen. We'll see if manager Johnson goes out there. There he is. Got the lineup card. Got the stopwatch. He's got his bus ticket back home. Taking his time, looking down to the bullpen. Cervenka needs a few more pitches. The bases are loaded. Davis at third, short at second, Mills at first. Donnie today, a walk, a run score to pop out a sacrifice. Again, Donnie has done a good job against left-handed pitching, both for power and average this season. Coming into today's game, batting 250 with five home runs against Southpaws, batting 242, seven home runs against right-handers, but he's had well over twice as many at-bats against right-handers. Cervenka coming in. It is a Zizol-sponsored pitching change. We'll be right back. Might be the game of the line right here. The Cubs ahead 7-4, fifth inning. Bases loaded, two away. DeWeese against Cervenka in a moment on AM 940 and the web at iowacubs.com. Hitting 205 lefties are hitting 256 against Cervenka. For the year, this will be his 28th game, all in relief. He's had a win, two losses, 0 for 2 in save situations, and a 3.74 ERA. He's a power pitcher, throws hard. Donnie's got to be looking first pitch fastball. Cervenka, 33 and two thirds innings, 23 walks, can be wild at times, and struck out 38 for the year. Nagowski in the grass on the right side. Even with the bag at third, Robertson. Pitch by Cervenka. Check swing. Chased a bad ball. Loan away a strike. Fastball. Almost like a cutter moving away from Donnie. Loan away for a check swing strike. Ace is loaded two away with the Cubs ahead by three here in the fifth. The fourth pitcher already today for the Redbirds. Cervenka deals 0-1. Curve. Hooks outside, ball one, one and one. Cabrera for three, Elledge for one. Cruz for five batters, got two outs and walked the bases loaded. And now Cervenka. Again, the all-star break. So you can use your bullpen today. The one, one. Swing and a miss. Fastball away, 93 in the outside corner. Strike two, one and two on Donnie. This is where he cuts down in a swing. Not thinking power. Making contact. But the base is loaded two away. As Hudson will give Cervenka the sign. Donnie 0 for 7. Base is loaded this year. That one hooks way outside. Ball 2, 2 and 2. Probably go back to the fastball here. They've been pitching Donnie outside. Let's see what they have in mind. Davis at third. He's been out there a long time with the leadoff walk. Zach Short at second. He walked after two strikeouts. Alec Mills would draw a walk. Cruz out. Cervenka in. And the 2-2 pitch. Hudson the target away. And this one fouled back to the screen behind the plate. Fastball away. I wonder what the odds are to go 3-2. It's two and two, two out, and the base is loaded. Cubs, those uh, red tops today, and the Redbirds have uh, navy blue tops on today. Cardinal affiliate. Cervenka reloads and another 2 2 pitch. Breaking ball, sky to right, hit deep. Back on this one, Garcia, shy of the track. He'll make the catch. Step or two away from the warning track, and that ends the inning. Iowa leaves the bases loaded. No runs, no hits. Three walks, three left on. The Cubs now left six on base. Through five, it's still Iowa seven, Memphis four on AM 940, the web at iowacubs.com. Finals yet at the big league level with the White Sox do lead the Cubs 3 0 that game now in the sixth inning. 3 4 5 hitters. Nagowski leads off. 
And Garcia and Thomas, sixth inning. Alec Mills back out there. Nagowski 0 for 2. Outfield slightly to right. Wind up on the pitch. Nagowski hits a lot to right field. He takes one maybe a bit low there, ball one. That's over the plate, but low again. 2-0 oh the count. Alec at 67 pitches, 44 for strikes. Fly ball left field on the go. Donnie Deweese to his right, gliding and grabbing near the track. Got a very good jump on that ball. That's out number one. Nagowski flies out, pulling one, and now Garcia. Adolis Garcia has popped out, flight out. He's 0 for 2. Wind up with a pitch by Alec Mills. Breaking ball, and this one lifted to left field again, surrounded and caught by Donnie to his right. Back to back balls and play to left field. Two catches for Donnie Dewees. Donnie goes back on one, Donnie comes in on one, Donnie makes two plays. Sounds like one of those kid books, yeah. Dr. Seuss. A Donnie book. Yeah, more like Alexander in the No Good, Very Bad Day. <laughs> Alec today has had 10 flyouts, four ground outs, couple of strikeouts. He's walked two ahead, 7 4, sixth inning, two out, nobody on for Thomas. Lane Thomas takes a low pitch at the knees, a strike. Thomas is singled, scored, and grounded out. Cubs lead 7 4. There's ball one, one and one. Just saw a note where. The Cubs and rookie ball, yeah, Alexander Gara, or uh, I think one of the Arizona teams had a three home run game. There's a smash to third. A line drive and Giambroni with a catch to his left. That was a seed off the bat of Thomas, hit it hard, but good quick reaction by Giambroni and a nice inning. back to the mound he did his job got Donnie Deweese to fly to deep right left the bases loaded in the fifth Dixon Machado leads off he's been on base twice a double reached on an air one for three with a run scored from the stretch Pavinka's pitch is low ball one Kid that had the three home run game for a Cubs Arizona rookie team in the Arizona Rookie League. The catcher called strike one and one. Alexander Gara. He's out of uh, born in Cuba, but he lives now in Mexico. Turned two. Twenty two years of age. Last year he had only three home runs for the year. Of course he played short season made for last year forty six games three homers and this year he has six hits. And uh, five have been home runs. It's a foul out of play. One and two the count. Cubs do have very good catching prospect. There's a ball alone inside. I think he's in the Futures game, isn't he, Alex? Miguel Amaya. Amaya, yeah. Yep. I believe they'll have to put him on the 40-man roster, which I would assume they will do. This only, off season. only 20 years old. 2-2 pitcher by Savinka. Machado leading off. The Cubs ahead 7-4, sixth inning. There's ball three, full count. Umpa umpire Ramon De Jesus getting a lot of pitches to call today. Six walks on the Redbird side. Three by Cabrera, three by Cruz. Ground ball pulled just foul. Sharply hit outside of third down to the Cub bullpen. Deflected up into the crowd. 
Cubs uh, could not cash in in the three walks last inning. But in the fourth inning, two of their five runs scored by men that walked. Helped out by an error that inning for a couple of unearned runs. Three run lead for Iowa here in the sixth. Hap on deck and then Zagunas and Cervenka with a payoff pitch. This one tap foul down to third. Again, by my unofficial count, I've got the Redbirds down for 10 three ball counts. It is a comfortable day, a nice summer day. Temperature in the upper 70s, some clouds up there. Light breeze, great day to be at the ballpark. Swing and a miss. Good pitch, low and in. That's a movement on it. Looks like he throws a pretty good cutter now, Cervenka. A strike out of Machado. Ian Happ back to the right side. He's had a single and a double right handed and reached on a fielder's choice hitting left handed in the fourth. That was that interesting play with second and third. A ground ball to first. Nagowski thought Mills, the runner at third, would, was trying to score, so he fired home. Mills went back to third, and then they threw to second, and Machado was safe at second. So the Cubs had the bases loaded there. There's a called strike. Zagunas played it a run with a fielder's choice. 0-1, one, one out, nobody on. In the bottom of the sixth inning. Target blown away by the catcher Hudson. Pitch is right there, but too low for a ball. Two and one. Typically over the All-Star break, not a lot of big trades are consummated at the major league level. A lot of discussion though, setting the stage for maybe something. Soon thereafter, that's a strike. I think Jerry DePoto might try to make a trade with every other <laughs> Major League team. 29 trades, yeah. 29 teams. That would be fun. Now the target in and the 1 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Chased a breaking ball down low. A good catch save there by Hudson for the strikeout. Back to back strikeout. Cervenka doing a good job here in relief. Now Mark Sagunas. He's 0 for 3. Cubs, they were up and down in order in the second. Other than that, they've had men on base. Again, they've left six. That's a pitch down the heart of the plate for a called strike. 7-4 Iowa lead. The stretch and the 0-1. Check swing, foul ball at the plate, quickly 0-2. Cervenka out of Texas, I believe the Houston area. Originally drafted by the Red Sox at a $350,000 signing bonus in the 2008 draft in the 27th round. Been of the Red Sox, the Cubs, the Braves, Miami, Tigers, now the Cardinals. Big league time with Atlanta and Miami. Foul off the mask of the catcher Hudson. Mark hangs in there as Agunas at 0 and 2. Cervenka with the Iowa Cubs for 12 games in 2015. There's a, of course, Marty Peavy was the manager for the Cubs that year. Taylor Davis on that team. Two out, nobody on the 0-2 pitch. Hudson sets up inside the catcher. And a hot shot. To the right side, good fielding play by Lopez, but he can't make a throw. Diving to his left, looked like he got his hand, his glove hand pinned under yep. his body, and he's shaken up. That's not good. It's a base hit, but a fine effort there by Lopez, diving to his left to the outfield grass. Mark Sagunas, good piece of hitting at 0-2, comes up with a base hit. That's the seventh Iowa hit. Now Taylor Davis, two out of man on. They're attending to... The second baseman, Irving Lopez. Busy day for the trainer, Dan Martin. Every day a busy day for the trainers. 
He's stretching out his hand right now. He does seem to be okay. Might have just jammed it. It looked like that. The glove hand, again, maybe pinned under his body as he made that diving stop on a two hopper by Zagunas. Zagunas and Cervenka, chance to ta uh, chat there between the mound and first base. Chris Valeka was an Iowa Cub in 2015. Matt Caesar. Matt now with uh, Reno, I believe. Yep. Hit for the cycle earlier this year. Lopez stays in. Two out of man on Zagunas. Nagowski holding him at first. 7-4 Iowa lead. Taylor Davis, a couple of walks, a fly out. He's 0 for 1. That's down low. Blocked by Hudson. Zaguna stays at first base. Ball one. Hudson's had a nice game behind the dish. Kisner, the day off, had caught the first three games. He's the guy they're now maybe grooming to take over for Yadier Molina. It's not an enviable spot to follow a Cardinal legend. Inside, 2-0 the count. Just that light wind today blowing right to left. And a nice series. Cubs winning two out of three. Well attended. Starting on the 4th of July. A strike down the middle. 2-1. and one. Let's see if Doug Desenzo puts on a play. Has a steal or hit and run at 2-1. and one. Zagunas runs pretty well. Savinka picked up the sign, check of the man at first, high set, and the left-hander's pitch. Sagunas not running, and it's a low strike, Ooh. two and two. That did look low. <laughs> Taylor a little chagrined. Wow, having a discussion with the umpire, Ramon De Jesus. It's, of course, he's the Iowa catcher. He can talk to uh, Ramon quite a bit today. The 2-2 two -two in the air right field, not real deep. Garcia coming in, going out, unable to make the catch as Lopez, a base hit. Taylor wins, ball don't lie. Parachute single to right field. Zagunas pedaling over to third, so it's first and third, back-to-back -back hits. Neither ball hit real hard. Ground ball, base hit. Smothered by Lopez at second, then a pop fly Lopez couldn't get to in shallow right field. First and third for Zach Short. Again, the Cubs struggling a bit in the clutch hit category today. Can Zach Short deliver? Iowa leaving six on base. Base is loaded last inning. Cervenka with a first pitch fastball to strike. Cervenka is up to 28 pitches, 20 for strikes. They're wondering about Alec Mills. Six innings, 72 pitches, 49 strikes. Cubs are two for nine, runners in scoring position. First and third, the 0-1, low for a ball, one and one. Nagowski in front of the runner at first base. They know Taylor not a threat to steal, so he's trying to cut down on the hole a bit right side. He's playing in the cut of the grass. And now the 1-1. Check swing, half swing, a foul ball to the on-deck hitter, Trent Giambroni, strike two, one and two. Robertson to third, a throwing air earlier today. That's been uh, one of two chances for him. The other one was a put out, a little easier play. An air on a throw. One ball, two strikes. Cervenka known as a strikeout guy, power lefty. Fouled again by Zach. Tough pitch, fights it off to stay alive at a ball, two strikes. First and third, two away in the bottom of the sixth. 7-4 Iowa lead. Glad to have you along. AM 940 and the web at iowacubs.com. Those viewing the game at milb.tv. Cervenka, third base side of the rubber. Rubber. 
Again, he's set. Hudson sets up. Lone outside. Pitch right there. Call third strike. Nice pitch. Fastball 92 for the strikeout of Zach Short to end the inning. Struck out the side. Cervenka did. Gave up a couple of singles. No runs, two hits. Iowa now leading eight on base. They still have the lead after six. Iowa 7, Memphis 4 on AM 940 and the web at iowacubs.com. We played six today here at Principal Park. Cubs have that 7 4 lead. We do have a couple of finals at the big league level. Toronto at home defeated Baltimore 6 1. And Tampa Bay had a win over the Yankees to split their four game series 2 1. They had a lot of close games there. Exciting baseball, but the Rays over the Yanks today 2 1. Morton over Paxton. That was a pretty astute move uh, the Rays made to sign Morton this offseason. Latest on the Cubs at White Sox, 3 0 still. White Sox ahead, batting in the bottom of the sixth. We're ready for the top of the seventh here at Principal Park and to take you down the home stretch of the play by play. Back to Alex Cohen. Appreciate it, Dean. In that Cubs game, Eloy Jimenez, a two run homer. Jose Abreu, solo shot. Eloy Jimenez, 16 home runs this year, two against the Cubs. Righty versus righty. First pitch, Alec Mills to Joe Hudson is fouled back at the screen behind home plate. Count of 1-1, one, one. Cubs two runs in the first, five runs in the fourth. Redbirds three runs in the second, one run in the fifth, seven to four game here in the seventh. No balls, one strike, kicking the pitch here from Mills. Curveball, swing and a miss. Strike two. Well, this was not the quick getaway day that we were expecting. On pace for a three-hour game, although Cubs leading seven to four. Hopefully we won't have to see a bottom of the ninth. 0-2. Curveball popped up. Shallow left field foul territory going back. Trent Giambroni, same with Dixon Machado. The ball goes into the stands, two rows back out of play. Of course, this game you have to expect the unexpected. Today I don't want to expect the unexpected. <laughs> I want a 7-4 victory. We've seen a lot of unexpected this year. We've seen 15 runs in an inning. We've seen come from behind wins. We've seen a little bit of everything. If you had booked your flight to go back home, you'd be at the airport now. A two pitch. Misses outside. Count one to two. I, I was thinking about booking a Sunday afternoon flight, but yeah. I decided against Between it. Between myself and Randy and John, we'd, we'd cover for you. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. One, two. Curveball. Check swing outside. He did go around strike three. I don't think he went around there, but Joe Hudson strikes out swinging one away. He'll bring up Irving Lopez. Does that mean that I'm, I'm covered when it comes to reinforcements or you guys don't really need me all that much? <laughs> no, you're covered. That's all it means. So here's Lopez. Steps in from the left side. He had half the story today. Two more hits. 10 for his last 21, three consecutive multi-hit games. Pitch, curveball, take it on the inside corner for a strength. Put a little extra mustard on that curveball, Mills, 66 miles per hour. 
The 0-1 pitch. Two-seamer misses inside. One ball, one strike. Alec Mills, 78 pitches, six and a third innings pitch. Four hits, four runs. Really one mistake, that three-run home run. 1-1 one, one pitch. Curveball, misses low. Two balls, one strike. Lopez gives you good at bat. Fortunately, he's okay on a diving play in the bottom of the sixth inning. He jammed his wrist on the ground for a while. 2-1. Swing and a miss. Wave through a changeup. Two balls, two strikes. Action in the I-Cubs bullpen. A righty warming up. I think that's James Norwood. He hasn't pitched in a bit. Norwood had the save in San Antonio. Pitch, it's pulled foul right side out of play. Count to a two. To be honest with you, Dean, Norwood hasn't, I don't think he's pitched this series. He had that five-out save in San Antonio, then a one, two, three, ninth inning. In the final game in San Antonio, I don't think he's pitched this series. I pitched in the first game. 2-2. Two, two. Hits the inside corner, a call third strike. I think he had a quick eighth inning. On uh, back-to-back yeah. strikeouts, I'm looking. Yeah, Thursday. I see Clifton, Edwards, Brooks, and Wick for Thursday. Oh, Brooks, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. I'm sorry, Nor- not Norwood. Back-to-back strikeouts here for Mills. Here in the seventh, first pitch. Hit well to center. Should stay in the arc. Going back, Ian Happ a couple steps, makes the catch, and it ends the inning. One, two, three inning, Alec Mills. 82 pitches, seven innings, four hits, four runs. Ellis will see Trent Giambroni, Eric Castillo, Alec Mills. Ellis got the loss two nights ago. I Cubs one, nine to eight. Two runs in the eighth. Ellis a blown save, three and four on the year with the loss. First pitch, misses outside, count one and up. Robel Garcia, solo home run. He might be there to stay. Pitch, curveball, hits the outside quarter for a strike. Count one and one, Cubs trailing three to one against the White Sox in the seventh. So all Robel's done in his two starts with the Chicago Cubs is it homers in back-to-back games. One-one pitch, misses low and inside. Count two and one. I know that he played yesterday. I'm not sure if he started though. I think he was the uh, DH. He was the DH, okay. Because I know he didn't play the field yesterday. Two balls, one strike, pitch. Popped up just above us here in the press box. Out to a two. I don't think we had a winner in our Amish House baseball furniture uh, trivia question. So what's the question? Uh, maybe I haven't looked. Maybe you could stump me. It was the record for the most All-Star game appearance is 24, along with Hank Aaron and let's see who was the uh, Willie Mays, and then this third guy. Two-two curveball misses high. Cardinal Green. Out to a two. Yeah, you said there was a statue in front of him. Stan Musial. Yep. Stan the man. Stan the man. Three balls, two strikes. Payoff pitch. Curveball in foul off the glove and the mask of the catcher Hudson. How well, tough it is to follow a legend. Stan Musial, his last season was 63. And you know who uh, stepped into his shoes was the next Cardinal left fielder, 64. Three balls, two strikes, pitch, fastball outside corner, called third strike. Giabroni thought it was ball four. Instead, strikeout looking begins the bottom of the seventh. Bring up Eric Castillo. I don't. Lou Brock. He'd go on to become a Hall of Famer. Man, I didn't know St. Louis Cardinal left fielders were like Green Bay Packer quarterbacks. <laughs> yeah. First pitch to Eric Castillo. This is inside count one and all. One up. Misses inside. Two balls, no strikes. Seven. Not easy to follow a legend. Uh, Alex, how about the guy that followed Albert Pujols as the next Cardinal first baseman after Albert, Albert left for Anaheim? 2010 was Albert's last season, or 2011. 2-0 line up the middle. That's a base hit. Eric Castillo, two for four today. Well, now base runner in the seventh will bring up the pitcher spot, and it's Francisco Arcia. 
It's a guy we saw in this league just a couple of years back, maybe two or three years ago, was in this league. It's not Matt Adams. No. I'm not sure if he's playing yet this year or again this year. He's also with the Red Sox after his Cardinal days. I think he, he was with, like, Reno or somebody else. west. With, he was with El Paso. It's, El Paso. Al, it's Alan Craig. Alan Craig, yeah, good job. Yep. Righty versus lefty pitch. Foul back at the screen behind home plate. Foul 1-1. One, one. Yep, Alan Craig. Never for, can forget a guy with two first names. Alan Craig. He was a good hitter, just couldn't stay healthy. Garcia gets something in his eyes. He steps out of the batter's box. Now back in. No balls, one strike. Ellis, first base side of the rubber. The pinch. Fastball taken up high. Count one on one. Chris Ellis, no relation to Dean Ellis. Last name spelled differently. Dean, I prefer your name than his. His last name spelled E L L I S. Dean, you have an H in there. Makes I do. It, makes it more authentic. 1 1. Misses outside. Out 2 and 1. Not as much confusion. Anybody ask, are you related to Chris? Well, how does he spell his name? Yeah. E L L I S. Nope, there, I'm not. There you go. Two balls, one strike. The pitch. Popped up foul, third base side, out of play. Count to a two. Just thinking of all these legends, like uh, one of the greatest catchers ever, Johnny Bench of the Reds. His last season was 1983 with. He threw out a first pitch the other day. Cincinnati, at the Cincinnati game? Yep. He's quite the character in his uh, retirement years. He's a new father, or a new ish father. Wow. 2 2. Misses outside, count three. A two saw a, a real. Sports documentary segment on him. I think he has a 13-year-old kid, an 11-year-old kid. Boy, the catcher the next year for the Reds in 84 was a left-handed hitting catcher with the name of Brad Golden. 3-2 misses inside ball four. Castillo was off on the pitch. Garcia walks. It brings runners at first and second. One out. Here's Donnie Dweez. Cubs getting a lot of runners today. Eight left on base. They're two for ten guys in scoring position. Seven walks issued by the Redbirds. A couple of chances to break it open here, Alex, but haven't done it yet today. Up by three. Let's see if Donnie can deliver. He steps in from the left side. First pitch. Swing and a miss. Might have tipped the change. Or sorry, tipped the curveball. Count of 1-1. One, he one. flew out to deep right with the bases loaded in his last at bat. No balls. One strike. And the pitch. Fastball pounds the outside quarter for a strike. Count of a 2. Of course, for years and years, the Chicago Cubs just had a gaping hole at third base after Ron Santo left. Went through quite a few guys before Chris Bryant came along. Uh, Ramos Ramirez. Uh, Ramos Ramirez probably did the, the best job of filling in a few years. 0-2 oh, line up the middle coming into Rosarena. Can't get it. He misplayed it. That ball will roll to the wall. Castillo rounds third and scores. Arcia stops at third. It's an RBI double for Donnie Dweez. 8-4 I Cubs here with the seven. Yeah, Rosarena thought he might be able to catch that one. All of a sudden slammed on the brakes and uh, couldn't even stop it. Ball was scalded by Donnie. That was a misplay. There's a hit with guys in scoring position. Well, the Chicago Cubs issues mirror the Iowa Cubs issues with runners in scoring position. What? Donnie Dweez. RBI double. 8 4 I Cubs. Here's Dixon Machado. Doubled and scored in the first. He's hit the ball hard all day. Infield playing in. Iowa an opportunity to really take control of this game. First pitch, swing and a miss. Strike one. D, did you see there was a brawl in the stands of the Cubs-White Sox game no, last night? No, I did not. 
Six or seven rows deep in the first level. It com comprised of primarily women. Pitch and it is low and outside. It's a check swing by Machado. I believe he did go around. Count with two. Yeah, look it up on the internet. It's, it's pretty crazy. No balls, two strikes. Runners at second and third here in the seventh. 8 4 Iowa. Cubs White Sox turning into a pretty heated rivalry right now. It's always a big rivalry, but with both teams being competitive, it's more fun. 0 2. Swing at a chopper foul right off the front foot of Machado. Count with 2. Especially with uh, Jimenez and Cease now up in the big leagues, a couple of the prospects they acquired. It's a big part of it. I I'll tell you what. The Chicago White Sox are a fun team to watch. They're young, they're inexperienced, they commit a lot of errors, they strike out a lot, but Yoan Makata, Tim Anderson. Anderson, yeah, got some good young guys. They really do. Some more on the way, too. Luis Robert coming up. The 0-2. Misses outside. Count one, this would be count one or two. Abreu is kind of a leader on that team. They've, they've done pretty well with uh, some of the international guys. One ball, two strikes. Ellis taking his time, and Machado steps out of the batter's box. Tim Anderson's a really fun player to watch at short. Plays with some flair, some zest. One, two. Taken high and tight and nearly hit Machado. Fastball up and in at 94, and fortunately, he got out of the way of that one. Dean, I think baseball is better when you have inner city rivals that can compete, that the level of play is even. Like, I think baseball is better when the Dodgers and Angels can compete. I think baseball is better when the Yankees and Mets can compete. And I think baseball is better when the White Sox and the Cubs compete. Yeah, the Mets and the Yankees in the World Series that one year, a lot of it was excitement. Awesome. It was awesome. 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss, strike three. Got him on a changeup. Machado down on strikes for the second time today. Now, two away here with the seven to bring a B in half. And the White Sox, if they do gradually get better, that's a division that's up for the taking. Indians coming off of their high reign. Minnesota playing really well this year, but there hasn't been an era of dominance in the AL Central. The Royals had it for about three years. The Tigers before that had it for about three years. Indians had it for two years. Chicago White Sox theoretically should be a big market team as far as the payroll is concerned, but they typically aren't. They just have the don't have the attendance that the uh, Cubs have drawn. Well, they were in the running for Manny Machado. Didn't end up getting him. But, yes, Jose Abreu, probably their most featured signing, international signing in recent memory. Done pretty well with the trades, the Chris Sale well, trade they over traded the Red for, Sox. They traded for Yohan Moncada, and then remember they traded Adam Eaton to the Nationals and got Lucas Giolito, who's also been great. Yep. Here's Ian Happ, first pitch, swing and a miss. Strike one. Happ, a two-run single in the first, a double in the third. Back-to-back multi-hit games. No balls, one strike. Ellis, first base side of the rubber. And the 0-1 pitch. Fastball. Misses outside. Count 1-1. Would be great to see the Chicago Cubs come back in this one. One back-to-back -back games. One against the Pirates. One against the White Sox. And the 1-1. Line drive down the right field line. Just goes foul into the seats. Count 1-2. Right at a fan with a Javi Baez jersey on, I believe. Now they can't find the ball. Looking down at the stands, I see a Wilson Contreras jersey, a Chris Bryant jersey, an Albert Pujols jersey. A Chris Molina Bryant. there. I see a Molina. I see Molina there too. Pitch. Line foul at the screen behind home plate. A Chris Bryant player T. What do you think Schwarber. is the most, what do you think is the most popular jersey here right now? 
this season. Probably still go with a Chris Bryant. I think you're right. At this ballpark. Don't see Bryant. that many Anthony Rizzo's, which is a little surprising. I see quite a few 44s. Do you? Yep. Guess I'm just blind to it. 1 2. Misses outside. Count 2 2. I see a lot of Baez, a lot of Bryant, some Schwarber. Just haven't seen that many Rizzo's. 2-2 two, two, count, two outs. One run already here in the seventh for the I-Cubs. RBI double Donnie Dweez who's on second pitch. Curveball misses low. Three balls, two strikes. Still see a guy once in a while with a Fukudome jersey. I love it. I've seen him for quite a few years. Kosuke. <laughs> got a good deal on it. Probably got it at Models for 50% off. <laughs> I think somebody paid him to take it. 3-2 count, two outs. Runners at second and third. Ellis against Happ in the pitch. Line foul into the skybox level. Hey, there's a Rizzo. The, hit off the railing, and there's a Rizzo right yep. there. Right He's on got a glove on. It was speaking to us. Do we have an attendance yet? No, no attendance. Still waiting, still counting. I was 7,555. Dean was a little bit lower at, what, 7,887, a little higher. What was that? Is that an attendance or no, somebody warming the bullpen? Pitch. <laughs> Check swing at a low breaking uh -oh. ball. Hap went around strike three. He uh -oh. slams the bat on the ground. Throws his helmet. Hap a little frustrated. And that will end the inning. Icubs score a run. They do so on two hits. No errors. They leave two men left on base. Icubs have stranded seven through the last three innings. They still lead eight to four right here on the Iowa Cubs radio network. Top eight here at Principal Park. Alex going to Ellis here on the call. We have Noah Manderfell back at the station. Sunday afternoon here in Des Moines. I comes finishing off the first half of their 2019 PCL season. Lead by a score of eight to four. I comes eight runs, 10 hits, no errors. They've still stranded 10 today. We have a new pitcher, Zizel pitching. Change B. Weisel takes Zizel. Out for the local Hy-Vee and Fairway stores. Use as directed. Alec Mills out after seven innings. He gives up four runs on four hits. He line for his sixth victory of the year. Coming into the game is righty Dwayne Underwood Jr. Dwayne, his move to the bullpen has been very smooth. Did give up a run in his last outing. That was in two-thirds of an inning. Two nights ago, righty versus righty. First pitch to Edmundo Sosa. Fastball misses high, count one and oh. 7,712 the attendance, and I win it to go into the break. Pitch it, swing and a miss, strike one. You know, I'll take that. It was about 160 off. 1-1. One, one. This is outside. Two balls and one strike. Team, we got to give our Iowa Cubs fans credit. Coming out in full force this weekend, had it. A crowd of over 13,000 on July 4th, and then 
11,000 on Friday. Pitch misses outside. Count three and one. Three one. Up the foul out of play behind home plate. Count three and two. Dean, you counting? No, I'm right down the uh, seven seven one two. Ah, gotcha. Three two pitch. Taken high and tight, and it hits off of Sosa's shoulder. Ouch. Hit by pitch begins the inning. Lead off batter aboard here in the eighth will bring up Randy Rosarena. So yesterday's attendance, 8,052. Today, 7,712. And then 11,000 and 13,000. Pitch. Rounder right side. It goes into right field for a base hit. Sosa moves station to station. And now runners at first and second. Nobody out. Here's Kramer Robertson. So when you add 8,000. Nearly 8,000, 13,000, and 11,000. You're close to 45,000 people over the course of a week, and that is really impressive traffic and fanfare for the Iowa Cubs and fans here in Des Moines. Quick meeting at the mound. And Kramer Robertson steps in from the right side. 8-4, I-Cubs lead. We're in the eighth. Underwood fires. Fastball pounds the outside corner for a strike. It pops the glove at 94. Count on one. A one. Gets the outside corner for a strike again at 94. Count on one, two. Two nice pitches there by Underwood. Infield up the middle, playing a double play depth. That's Machado at short. And short at second. A little bit of a tongue twister. 0-2. Swing at a chopper up the middle. Machado fields, only plays to first. And he gets Kramer Robertson plenty of time. 6-3 put out. Sosa to third. A Rosarena to second. One out will bring up John Nagowski. Schedule here for the I-Cubs after today's game. Off Monday, off Tuesday, off Wednesday. Thursday at Round Rock, 7.05 p.m. first pitch. Friday at Round Rock, 7.05 p.m. first pitch. Saturday at Round Rock, 6.05 p.m. first pitch. Sunday at Round Rock, 6.05 p.m. first pitch. And the first pitch from Underwood, swing and a miss, strike one. 6.05 6.05 game on Sunday, and then a travel day. That's tough. No balls, one strike. Underwood sets at the belt, fires. Fastball high, chopper toward short. Should score a run. Machado fields, one step, fires to first. Nice stretch by Castillo. And it gets John Nagowski. It's an RBI ground out. And Bundo Sosa scores a Rosa right at a third. And Memphis gets a run back. They cut the deficit to three. It was an 8-4 lead coming into the inning. Now 8-5, I-Cubs advantage. Here's Adolis Garcia. Righty versus righty. And the first pitch. Misses outside, count 1-0. Dwayne is ERA at 5.71. He began the year as a starter. ERA was hovering around 7, moved to the bullpen. And the ERA has continued to drop. One ball, two strikes. It'll be one ball, no strikes. Pitch swing and a miss, strike one. Two outs. And that fastball by Underwood at 95 miles per hour. Adolis Garcia. Pair of flyouts to left in his last two at-bats. Popped out to the shortstop in his first at-bat pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike two, a healthy hack from Garcia. Dini certainly doesn't get cheated. No. And he's trying to elevate the ball. He's trying to hit it back to Memphis. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Garcia, 16 homers, 56 runs batted in. And the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. 96 on the gun, blew it by Garcia. It ends the inning. 
Twain gives up a run. He does so on a hit. No errors. One man left on base in scoring position. Go to the bottom of the eighth inning. I Cubs leading 8-5 to five right here on the Iowa Cubs Radio Network. Weisall takes Eisel. Available at your local Hy-Vee and Fairway stores. Use as directed. Beck, 6'3", 230-pound righty. Former big leaguer with the White Sox. Beck, he got the blown save on July 4th. Gave up two runs in the ninth. RBI single by Phillip Evans, won it. Here's Mark Sagunas who lead things off. Righty versus righty, and the first pitch. Fastball pounds outside, quarter four strike, count on one. Eight runs, ten hits, no errors for the I Cubs. Five runs, five hits, one error for the Redbirds. No balls, one strike. And Beck gets his sign. He fires. Fastball misses outside. Count one to one. Looking at the Pacific Coast League leaders, likely going into the second half. D, we have a 400 hitter in the PCL. Plays for Las Vegas. He's hitting 402. Ted Williams of the league. I believe his name is what? Chris Cor- Joseph? Corbin Joseph. Corbin Joseph. Yeah. Pitch misses outside. Count two and one. Not really a speed merchant either. Jonathan Daza, second in the league, hitting 377. Kevin Crone. Spent some time in the big leagues. Leads the PCL with 29 homers. 2-1 count. And the pitch by Beck. Swinging a tip foul off the mask of the catcher, Hudson. Count 2-2. Two two. D, what I find most impressive about home runs, Jordan Alvarez, who's been in the big leagues for the last month, is third in the league in homers with 23 still. I think he's hit six or eight, somewhere in that number in the big leagues. Batting over 300 last I saw. Kevin Crone leads the league, 80 runs batted in. Joseph, 456 on base percentage. Crone, 840 slugging percentage, percentage at a 1,290 OPS. Jorge Mateo leads the league and hits with 116. Two balls, two strikes, a pitch. Swing and a chopper foul behind home plate. Count to a two. Joseph leads the league in doubles with 26. Mateo leads the league in triples with 13. Matt Theis for Salt Lake leads the league in walks with 59. Ian Happ second in the league in walks with 55. Doug DeCenso said today he had a friend that went to a series in Las Vegas, saw four games, and saw 36 home runs. Oh, my gosh. Two balls, two strikes. Pitch to Mark Saguna, swing and a miss, strike three. 89 miles per hour. Zagunas a little bit out in front of it. Strikes out swinging one out here in the eighth. A bring up Taylor Davis. Sam Hilliard from Albuquerque. 47 extra base hits. Leagues the league. Isan Diaz. 69 runs scored. Ian Miller from Tacoma. 22 stolen bases. All league leaders. Here's Taylor Davis. Cubs still have seven games left out west, three at Reno and four at Tacoma. Righty versus righty first pitch. Line drive down the right field line, fouling out of play. End of July into August for that road trip. Got on one and Tacoma isn't necessarily a, nah, not a big hitter's park. Reno is a hitter's paradise. So that'll be an interesting series. No balls, one strike. <clears throat> and the pitch to Taylor. Popped up, shallow right field coming in. Adolis Garcia, long run. Garcia comes in, a near collision, and he makes a catch. It is not Adolis Garcia in right either. Miasis, yeah, the double Johan switch. Miasis. Baseball found the new guy, but he got there just in time. He was playing pretty deep. Stretching out for a basket catch. You look at the body type and the hair and the dreadlocks coming out the back, it kind of looks like Vladimir Guerrero Jr. He's stocky. Yep, yeah. Guerrero, I think I noticed the other day, has committed eight errors at third base. Struggled. That was a big knock on him 
When he was voted the number two overall prospect in minor league baseball coming into the season, Keith Law said it's because of his defense. Pitch, curveball, hits the inside corner for a strike. Yeah, Count on one. Tatis, shortstop. Well, there's no defensive knock on him. He's a gold glove caliber defender. Very exciting to watch. If not for Peter Alonzo, he's probably the National League Rookie of the Year. No balls, one strike in the pitch. Hard hit, line drive up the middle. It's a base hit for Zach Short. First multi-hit game coming back from injury. Really nice to have Short back in the lineup. it has been on base three times today. And to bring up Trent Giambroni. That was on a 96-mile-per-hour fastball, and Short just roped it right up the middle. Yankees just signed an international guy for uh, $5 million, 16-year-old that the uh, scouts rave about. Dean, could you imagine having $5 million at the age of 16? What would you use on it? New car? Yeah, maybe a new car. Save most of it. Righty versus righty. Pitch, line drive, left field, falls in for a base hit. Multi-hit game for Trent Giambroni. Of course, in places like the Dominican and these foreign lands, a uh, big portion of that money goes to their agent or their trainers, the guys that prepare them for the showcases. Well, Cubs get it going here at two out. Nobody on back-to-back -back singles. Only a three-run lead. Does look like James Norwood in the Iowa pen. Here's Eric Castillo. Castillo, two hits today. Knock Cubs, 12 hits. Ian Happ, two hits. Zach Short, two hits. Trent Giambroni, two hits. Eric Castillo, two hits. Righty versus righty pitch. Swing at a chopper towards third. Fielded by Kramer Robertson. He tags the runner in the baseline, which is short. I was curious to see if Robertson was throwing that to first. He didn't. Applied the tag at NZ inning. No runs, two hits. Here at Principal Park, my Cubs eight, Redbirds five. That's the sound of their final three outs. And a new pitcher here for the Iowa Cubs, Freddie James Norwood. Norwood, this is a save situation as it's five for five in save opportunities. Norwood, his last appearance came four days ago in San Antonio. He pitched a scoreless nine. Two days before that, a perfect five out save. Be Lane Thomas to start off the ninth inning. Righty versus righty, first pitch. The ball hits the outside corner for a strike, count on one. Off the bench and substitutions for the I Cubs. Trent Giambroni out of the game. Philip Evans at third. 0 oh, 1. Misses low and outside. Count 1 1. Lane Thomas today, 1 for 3 with a run scored. Again, I Cubs, 8 runs on 12 hits, 2 runs in the first. They were down 3-2 to two after a three-run second inning from Memphis. High Cubs five runs in the fourth, and they haven't trailed since. 1-1 one, one pitch. This is outside. Out 1-1. One, one. We are right around a three-hour game, which is a little bit surprising. With a getaway day, and this being the final game of the first half. Pitch, line drive, right field. Spinning around, Mark Zagunas makes the catch. Just sort of turned his hips. Well, up one down here in the ninth. They'll bring up Joe Hudson. Memphis down to their final two outs. If the Icubs can hold on to this one, they would go into the break 7-1 and one in their last eight home games. Really nice shift from earlier in the season where the Icubs only won on the road and never won at home. Pitch hits the outside corner for a strike. Count on one. They'd be 52 and 38 overall, 14 games over 500, but just 21 and 24 here at Principal Park. No balls, one strike. The pitch. Fastball misses low and outside. Norwood's fastballs. That first one at 99 to Hudson, the second one at 98. One ball, one strike. Norwood fires. Splitter misses low. Two balls, one strike. 
Alex Cohen and Dean Ellis here on the call. Noah Manderfell back at the station. Fans, make sure you listen to the Gates Barbecue postgame show. We'll give you highlights, final recap, final words here from Principal Park. Two balls, one strike. Norwood, back shoulder set, pitch, fastball popped up behind home plate. Should be just around us here in the press box. I think it went over us. It did. Out to a two. Norwood. Look at his stats overall this season. They're not overly impressive here. Pitch misses outside. Count three and two. Norwood, three and oh, four, three, seven ERA. 27 appearances. Five saves, 35 innings pitch, 26 hits, 20 runs, 17 earned. 48 strikeouts and 18 walks. The 48 strikeouts and 35 innings pitch is impressive. 3-2. Swing and a miss, strike three. Got him on a splitter. And James Norwood, two up, two down here in the ninth. Redbirds down to their final out. And it's Irving Lopez to try to extend this ball game. Pretty cool moment in the Brewers game today, Dean. Mauricio Dubon, who we saw with San Antonio this year, he got promoted, he pinch hit for the Brewers, and is the first player out of Honduras to play in the big leagues. First pitch to Johan Mesas is taken outside. Count 1-0. Oh. Mesas, 3-10 hitter, three home runs, 30 to be 11 runs, batted in pitch, flared shallow right. Going back, Eric Castillo dives, can't make the catch. Ball falls in for a base hit. Nice effort, though. Looking at second baseman Zach Short. <laughs> he is having a little bit of fun right now with Eric Castillo. Diving a roll there by Castillo. Let's see. <laughs> well, it's like the fire drill. It's a stop, drop, and roll. Take a look at the replay. A flare out to right. It was pretty funny. <laughs> I can understand why Short is laughing. Miasis extends the game with a single. Here's Jose Martinez, who has a three-run home run today. 8-5 Cubs top nine, two outs, first pitch. Fastball taken down the middle for a strike. Count on one. Thor with 13 pitches, seven strikes, six balls. Back shoulder set the pitch. Misses low, a splitter. One ball, one strike. High Cubs looking to win the series. One out away from doing so. Final score, White Sox three, Cubs one. Tough loss for the Cubs. 1-1 one, one pitch. Check swing. And Martinez fouls it back at the screen. That nearly hit him on the hands. One ball, two strikes. And now, not only are the Redbirds down to their final out, but James Norwood at Jose Martinez down to his final strike. The one-two pitch misses inside a curveball. Two balls, two strikes. Norwood, first base side of the rubber. The pitch, swing, and a miss, strike three. High comes win it. They finish the first half 52 and 38, and they win a series against their arch rivals. They couldn't win a game against the Redbirds at home all last year, and they take the series three games to one here at Principal Park. Final score today, Iowa Cubs eight, Memphis Redbirds five. What a finish for the I Cubs to end the first half, Dean. And they take their fourth series win here at Principal Park, playing better baseball here at home. They've won 11 of their last 15 home games, still under 500, 21 and 24 here. And overall, their last 13 games, 10 wins. So a very solid first half of the season, or nearly two-thirds of the season now as we head into the All-Star break with a, a firm lead. We'll see what Omaha does today. But the Cubs had that 10-game lead coming into play today. Now 52 and 38 
Very good season thus far for the I Cubs. They can enjoy the All-Star break and resume play Thursday in Round Rock. And today, really, Alex, a typical Iowa win. All around good play, solid defensively, got good pitching. I thought Alec Mills really pitched another great game other than, you know, the home run ball hurt him, the three-run home run. But other than that, he was a usual very solid performance. And the bullpen backed him up. And the Cubs, nice to win uh, a series against the Redbirds, three out of four. They've had a lot of success, uh, six and two against uh, last place Memphis.